This episode, like all our episodes, contains coarse language and some mature subject matter, so listener discretion is advised. Okay. Are all the broods gone now? Excellent. Hit it! Welcome to the Untitled Bad Movie Podcast, where we have a fucking good time with some fucking bad movies. I'm Alessandria Mentari. And I'm Robin Caldwell, and today <laughs> we will be looking at Sleepover, directed by Joe Nussbaum, starring Alexa Penavega, Mika Burem, and Sarah Paxton. This movie was brought to us by our very own Alessandria. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. So, so how did you? So you saw this movie as a kid, correct? Yeah, it's one of those movies where like you just had the DVD and I, you keep watching it, which is definitely what I did. Nice. Oh, those yeah. are those are fun ones. So yeah, we had the DVD and yeah, I guess I don't remember why we got it, but obviously it looks like a movie that's de- definitely targeted towards my demographic because me and my sister love movies like. Um, a Cinderella story and Spy Kids and you know Alexa Vega was oh, in yeah. Spy Kids. Oh my gosh! I side note: if you haven't watched Spy Kids in your adult life, please do it. It is very fun. It's it a is very fun. Fun movie. as an adult and fun as a kid. So. I yeah. One night I just watched it like on a whim, and I was like, I wish I was watching this with somebody else because I was just like I was losing my mind laughing and like. like which Spy Kids movie? Because like the, the first, first one. Two, oh, now you're watching the third one because that one kind of goes off the rails. The third one. I don't think I've seen the third. No, I did see. I saw. I saw it as a teenager, and I was like, "Oh, Elijah Wood is in this." <laughs> That's who you're into, like, yeah, Elijah Wood, and he dies. No, just I recognized in. him that time around because as a kid, I was just like, "He's the guy," you know, he's or whatever his character's name is. He's the guy, and so yeah, I didn't get. I hadn't seen Lord of the Rings yet or anything, and so <laughs> yeah, watching him, watching it as a teenager, I was like, "Oh, yeah." yeah. And honestly, Alexa Vega. Well, she was in that movie, but like. Not for as long. I guess she had other things to do in her career, but yeah, she was. I guess she yeah. had to film this movie. Yeah, she was busy stealing boxers and skateboarding and liking having a hobby of hot dogs. Okay, so me and Robin just watched this, and I swear when we watched it, she almost had like an aneurysm three separate times. I can't remember <laughs> when, but there were just so many moments where like I was looking at her face and like she hasn't moved. Should I? Did she freeze or is she just having a, a seizure or a stroke? Oh, yes. We record via Zoom. So, yeah, I could have very easily just been frozen. But, yeah, no, I was kind of frozen in awe for many, many moments in this movie. Um, yeah, for, to, right off the bat, uh, we established that uh, Alexa Penavega's best friend, played by uh, Mika Burem, is moving to Vancouver. It, honestly, it reminds me of the movie, another Sarah Paxton movie, Aquamarine, because that movie, mm. like one of the one of the plot points is that a uh, best the the best friend of the main character is moving away, and they don't want that. But I gotta be yeah. honest, um, Aquamarine handles it a lot better. Although oh. this movie does pretty good, because like you know your friend moving away when you're young that that hurts, man. Oh, completely. Yeah, I yeah. I can totally and it's relate. Like, it's so out of your control, and like you're so young. Like honestly, friends moving away now as an adult that could be sad too. It's like you're my it friend. Can. You're not supposed to go. But I remember it feeling like because it was just one of those times in your like the first time in your young life where you feel a sense of upheaval. And also like just going into high school like that hurts. Like yeah. when I went to like okay we'll we'll discuss the film real quick but yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> In the transition between, like, the summer between middle school and, or, and elementary school for me, my best friend in the world moved away without telling me. Aww. And I was 11, and also I was a neurodivergent child, so Aww. I spent, like, a month, like, where's my best friend? And then I hear from another person, she moved away. Aww. And then I call her, and she's like, yeah, I moved, and no one told me, and yeah, Again, I was, uh, like, 11, neurodivergent child, but honestly, the most sane, mentally healthy child would sob as well. Yeah, absolutely. I was, so. yeah, I was sobbing, and I had plenty of warning, so I, yeah, I can't imagine. That would suck. I'm so yeah. sorry. I think that's, anyways, we should actually explain the movie before we explain certain parts. <laughs> yeah, anyways, yeah, so I watched this movie way too much as a kid, even though I was, <laughs> I was not, not in, like... I was definitely in elementary school when I watched this, so it gave me, like, very strange, like, 
ideas of yeah. what the future of, of just like what middle school would be not even <laughs> high school but middle school so yeah this is weird like even I even in my notes here like I, I oh, wrote, yeah, she, Robin takes notes and I'm just like uh. I had in my notes here oh the most realistic last day of school establishing shot ever the bell rings and then immediately just 50 extras throw multicolored pages out of these school doors and then they run out into the hallway and they're freaking out it's like that doesn't happen that doesn't happen yeah even okay i will say when i was in middle school uh, we want some of us like we wanted to do that high school musical 2 thing at the end at the start of summer when we're like summer summer yeah but it was just (laughs) like one classroom yeah summertime actually it wasn't (laughs) one classroom it was just like five kids so (laughs) yeah and they grew up to do musical theater yep (laughs) <laughs> so, yeah, I guess we're just recapping the movie now. So, yeah, it starts it starts with, like, um, uh, Alexa Vega just telling her friend, like, what, you're, moving to Mid- you're moving to Vancouver? Where is that anyways? I can't, like, survive high school without you. And, like, okay, yeah. exposition dump. But, you know, it gets us going. Mm-hmm. And then that whole establishing shot of, like, the bell rings for summer. Everyone's like, whoa! And Trash throw, the like, halls! We don't care about the custodians! We're adults! <laughs> clearly and then and yeah there's silly string um they run yeah. to a teacher who gives a summer reading list and stuff and then he gets silly string sprayed in his face and he's very like, upset about it like honestly if that happened to me i'd just be i'd be annoyed but i wouldn't like yell and go hey get back here i'd be like thanks thanks i would probably be off. it would be like he's wearing glasses so his eyes are protected but if somebody sprayed me in the face with silly string i'd probably be pretty pissed <laughs> Like, Look, like real we're talk. We're going really deep into the silly string talk. But yeah, especially okay. because <laughs> we're like 30 seconds into the movie. We can't go this deep on him. This movie is packed with odd moments. Yeah, um, that's why we all want to talk about them. So yeah, silly string. Moving on, Scout Taylor Compton comes in. She's like, Julie, um, Stacy, a.k.a. Sarah Paxton, she doesn't want, she's going to Liz's sleepover and Liz is Brie Larson. Like Brie Larson yeah. back when she was just playing like Mean Girls and teen movies. Yeah. Like, she was just in 13 going on 30 as well as a six chick, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's yeah she's adorable in this movie. Um, I feel like she's not given a Brie whole Larson. lot to do. She's kind of, like, the sidekick to the main... She's kind of like... Yeah, she's simping for Sarah Paxton. So. Absolutely. Yeah, very big simping energy. Side note, um, the invite for the sleepover looks like a ransom note. Can we talk <laughs> about that? It's so weird. It's, like, shaped... I guess it's supposed to look like a popsicle or something. It's, like orange or yellow or something it has like a little stick coming out the side but they used cutouts from magazine text to make the text on it and it just looks like like they have the president's daughter and they sent her a note to be like you bring five thousand dollars to the spot and we will return her unscathed like yeah it's very that um, uh, we meet we meet Evan Peters character who's called oh, yeah. SpongeBob for apparently his name is Russell reason. but they don't say his name so we just think they, he's SpongeBob yeah so his character's name is Russell it says in like the thing and like I'm on the in Wikipedia the page. Evan Peters as Russell Hayes, a very clumsy skateboarder who has his heart set on making Stacy fall in love with him. Oh my god! He also oh, he was also in a coma for three hours. Okay, uh, Robin, you have thoughts on um, Evan Peters' is Emmy winning energy? It's I. I said at one point when we were watching the movie that like I'm simultaneously like simultaneously having the best time whenever Evan Peters is on screen, but also the worst time. Cause like his performance is very, I think it's just like kind of cringy, I guess is like how it, I'm feeling. Cause I love it, but it's also like, ugh, like a real person did this in a room and they put it on camera. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm actually wonder like maybe all the other guys who came into the audition they went with the total like skater dude kind of thing and that Evan Peters maybe he just drank like a bunch of Monster Energy drinks yeah and was like hey what's up yeah uh, something else that I said over the course of the movie and I think you agreed with this but like he'd been reminding me of something the whole time and I realized <laughs> it in the dance scene just kind of the way that he holds his mouth and the way that he says certain things I was like oh he's Garth from Wayne's World but like on steroids. <laughs> or like on uppers or something like it's and just if like if Garth was way more hyper. Oh yeah, and for people who don't know what Wayne's World is, Garth is the character in the Uber Eats ads. Oh my God, those, <laughs> you want, you want to talk about bad movies? I <laughs> oh, 
I oh, wanted also, to like those commercials so also, much, fun, but I fun just thing, uh, don't. Dana Carvey follows Robin on Twitter, so. Oh, yes, he does. I, I doubt he'll listen to this, though. But I uh, really don't think he will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if Although he does, the, Dana. Most, the creator of most popular girls in school follows me on Twitter now. <laughs> Enjoy all my retweets about Pokemon fan art. That's all I do. Yeah, he also follows the podcast, which is... Insane. It's so weird because at the time that we're recording this, our podcast Twitter account has three followers but and like, two of them are us. But it's like so <laughs> small. But like, you know, honestly, a Twitter follow like that. Thanks, dude. That's that's nice. Yeah. But it, 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 very you can, nice. you watch the video where we were talking about like our, our experiences growing up with mo- the most popular girls in school. And I guess yeah. he was just flattered. He was part of our childhood. He gave us a <laughs> very foul mouth way of childhood. <laughs> I mean, as you can tell by the uh, the opening of this podcast, where we just swear right off the bat. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, let's to back think. to the movie. What yes, else? Where else? We keep getting we? Side SpongeBob, oh. um, SpongeBob, played by Emmy H- Witter, Evan Peters, and then and his best friend Hunter Parrish with the like most mid two thousands haircut. Like middle, yeah, middle school skater boy, kind of emo singer haircut. Kind of emo, kind of like like early Jim Halpert on The Office where it all kind of goes whoosh, it kind of whooshes and, out. Or basically quarantine hair minus the beard. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, clean shaven <laughs> quarantine hair. Yep, yep. Yeah. Robin knows him from uh, Weeds and I know him from like Spring Awakening. That in transition, I have this movie memorized, I swear, transition to the street <laughs> where Julie and her friend Hannah are walking down and they get approached by um, this dude in a convertible and Stacy, Sarah Paxton is there. Mm-hmm. And also it's like, they're in middle school and she's like riding in cars with boys, yeah. which is like, <laughs> which, okay. And not to be like a total pearl clutcher, but it's like, girl, you're in middle school. Just yeah. get obsessed with Sailor Moon like every normal kid. God. I mean, like depressingly, that is when I was middle school aged, I did, you know, in high school age, I did have, you know, some friends who were dating guys in their twenties or like dating guys who were older. Just going to leave it at that. Uh, pr- protect, protect young girls from creeps in their twenties. Anyway, <laughs> including this guy who is as yeah. it turns out who should be put on a list honestly yeah, he's the worst like it like, slowly also, gets like, revealed that he's just the I worst also could, yeah could you also imagine like I, i'm imagining being in high school and like just seeing like a guy who's like on the football team and stuff and he's like yeah i'm dating a middle schooler it's like yeah what? i i did have um i we're no longer friends but i did have a friend <laughs> uh for a little while until our early 20s and he uh yeah, I, one of the reasons we stopped being friends is I noticed that he kept dating girls in high school. And I was like, we're adults. Why are you, why are you doing that? He can't, I feel get like, a, he can't get an adult girlfriend. I'll just say that. I mean, pretty much. But like, side note, if you're our age and you're still going to your girlfriend's grad party, there's something wrong with you. Well, <laughs> grad party and um, she's not graduating college. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to be honest, I, I'm 23, but I would not date someone who was like, freshman in college yeah like that's like that still feels too young for me this is gonna be like three <laughs> we, hours long of us just, talking keep having tangents okay so they go they go to the, the high school they go to the high school and, and it's like this beautiful place they go to this fountain and that's like where everyone wants to eat lunch even though there's no lunch tables so yeah. that's weird yeah it's such a, okay so there's a fountain that just kind of has like benches that people sit on yeah but no real and tables it looks, nice. it looks quite nice and so that's where like the popular kids sit and then there's literal tables like full tables but they're near the dumpsters so that's where all the unpopular kids eat and also like where <laughs> who put these lunch tables near the dumpster i don't know i don't know who designed this school it's poor planning <laughs> and also they clearly don't have a cafeteria because like there's the dumpsters and the fountain and like the fountains are obviously superior but it's like this school doesn't have a cafeteria to yeah eat food in? why because also in my high school people were eating their lunches just sitting on the floor in the hallways which actually, yeah. that's not something you see in a lot of high school media, even though that's I true. know it's real. That's like, so accurate, yeah. Because, like, it happened with me. I sat in the middle of the staircase once, like, on the side, but, like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's where I would eat my lunch a lot. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't picturesque, but sometimes you just need to sit and fucking eat. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so there's, like, they're establishing yeah, ju- this then, weird high school dichotomy yeah. of, like, the popular kids sit here and the unpopular yep. kids sit there, which, and side note, Vegas, is not like, how it works. <laughs> It's not how no, I feel. No, that's how is. bisexuality works. You're either a fountain <laughs> or you're <a> garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, I'm both. Um, it's We're allowed to say that we're both bi. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's our privilege. Bi privilege. <laughs> yes, yes. So much privilege comes with this. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And then while they're by the fountain, we get introduced to the love interest. Yeah. And what he does is, he, if you want to say how he he's, goes in the scene, he skateboards over the fountain while this really girly, like, la, 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 la song. Plays. Yeah. And also, if you kind of squint, you can see the ramp that the stunt double went yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's behind, like, the fountain part. Yeah, and it's so he framed jumps in a fountain. way where you can't see it unless you're kind of looking. Yeah, but Honestly, once you pointed um, it out, I, I saw it as we were yeah. watching it. I was like, like oh yeah, okay, there's totally. Yeah, and I will say there's a the YouTuber Nick DeRamio. He did like a breakdown of this movie, hmm. and like he's a film. He went to NYU Film, so he deconstructs it from like a filmmaking perspective, and he points out there are so many stunt doubles in this movie, <laughs> and it ruined it for me. Oh, um, I mean, yeah. I mean, you were pointing out the stunt doubles to me, and yeah, you're right. There are a lot of them. And it's like, oh, like when I was a kid, I'm like, that was so awesome. And now I'm like, oh, stunt double, mm-hmm. stunt double. <laughs> Anyways, that's how the um, love interest comes in. He yeets himself over the fountain, and then the music's like, sha-la-la-la-la, sha-la-la-la-la. And then as he slowly takes off his helmet, and I mean, he's all right. It's just yeah. like, he's, he's quite honestly, most of the attractive. skater boys I know, like, they act exactly like Evan Peters. <laughs> SpongeBob. I'm just saying. Yeah, and then just oh, saying. and also like Alexa Panavega has such a weird line. So she sees this guy like slow mo take his helmet off, and she's like, "Oh, he is so plush." And I don't know what that means. Like I was around when this movie came out, but that was not. This movie came out in 2004. It, that was like... not the. That was not any sort of slang that I ever heard. So. I guess say, oh my god, he's so hot, or like, wow, or stuff like that. Yeah. I, I don't, honestly, as a writer, like, honestly, Robin, we're both writers. Let's see what else we could think of for this scene. Guy yeets himself over the fountain, and the girl is like, oh my god, he is so, I don't know. Bang <laughs> I don't know, I was oh. just thinking that, like, her eyes would pop out of her head, and she'd drool a little bit and go, ooga. <laughs> Yes, that's a straight woman. Um, yeah. Act. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. She is 14, so like hormonal 14 year old. So I totally understand that whole, like, oh my God, a boy, <laughs> like, kind of mindset. And also, I can't, like, can I just say, as a former teenager, this, this boy is written perfectly. Because <laughs> when I was a teenager, because this guy, his entire arc is like, he has one interest, skateboarding, and the rest of the time, he's talking about Julie. That's his entire personality in this movie. And when I was 14, like, that was the dream. A guy with one hobby who just cares about me a lot. <laughs> I just want a cute face who cares about me. You yeah. got it. Yep. Um, okay. So that's so anyway, this guy. <laughs> now that the love interest and the um, the lunch spot, which is apparently so important, is established, we go to the home, and Jane Lynch plays the mom. And yes, movie. Jane so Lynch. Jane Lynch before, like, Glee like, made her a superstar and got her that Emmy. She got an Emmy? Yeah, for, an Emmy for Glee. Oh, go Jane Lynch. Yeah, well-deserved. She was great on Glee. Yeah. Like, the show was a train wreck, but God, was she good in it. <laughs> she, yeah. Jane like, Lynch is good like, in everything, honestly. Yeah. I don't think I've ever not enjoyed her in something. Like, I've seen bad movies that she was in and have just been like, she's perfect. You know? Yeah, it's like this movie, honestly. Like, Steve Carell. Oh, we will oh, get to Steve Carell. We will get to Steve Carell's <laughs> pitch-perfect so, yeah. Paul Blart performance. Comes in. The mom comes in, or the um, two friends, they go to see Julie's mom, and Julie's mom is like, um, so yeah, I got you guys stuff for a ladybug party, and yeah. like it establishes, oh, the mom thinks that her daughter is still a little girl, but the daughter is like, mom, I'm not a little girl anymore. She's 14. She's a grown-up. She's 14. That's how old Sailor Moon she literally was. S- oh, oh, but she literally says, what does she say? I'm 14, not four. Honestly, like, the mom comes in with, like, these ladybugs, like, headbands. With She's the got, like, antennas. a little antenna. Like, yeah, the little yeah I feel bobbers. like you'd wear that to a rave. Or, like, let's be real, girl. You would want to wear those and get totally stoned with your friends, but what else? <laughs> that would be a very fun, like, to look across at your friend just going, la, 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 and rocking their head <laughs> back and forth. And you're just like, whoa. I'm just saying there's probably an alternate, like, version of this movie where instead of going out on a scavenger hunt, they all just get real fucking stoned in there. I mean. (laughs) Sarah Paxane comes with the weed. She's like, oh, fuck yeah. And they all get stoned. And then it just becomes that scene in 9 to 5 where it's, like, Jane Fonda (laughs) and Lily Tomlin and Dolly Parton getting baked and eating strawberries. (laughs) 
It's all I so mean, that, good. That also sounds like something that 14 year olds would do, but also they would like get stoned wrong or something. Like, whoa, those brownies were too much, man. <laughs> Just saying, when I was in eighth grade, um, I heard there was a dancer that someone brought uh, weed brownies to. Oh. So, yeah, I, I never, I didn't, I only went to one dance in grade eight, and I, so it wasn't that one, but apparently they got in big trouble because a lot of people ended up throwing up. Oh, no. Yeah. Yikes. That's too bad. But anyways, um, that's, also, that's also what 14-year-olds do. Yeah. We also, so, uh, in this scene, we also meet her brother, Sam Huntington, yeah, who pl- played, played by Jimmy Sam. Olsen in Superman Returns. Oh, Superman. I know him from Not Another Teen Movie. <laughs> Oh, oh no! Oh, he's <laughs> the guy who's like, like, I can't believe a guy has never taken a dump on your chest! <laughs> well, I mean, like, I wasn't gonna was bring me? that scene <laughs> up, but I mean, it is the most what? iconic one. But uh, that's what I specifically know him from. He's like a parody of Chris Klein's character in American Pie. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. telling him. Who was, he wasn't telling it to Lacey Chabert, but he was no, telling no, it to like, it was, um, oh my the gosh, Cruel Intentions name? girl. What's her name from the L word? I don't know, but again, it's like yeah. the whole, the only line I, I remember is like, I can't believe a guy's never taken a dump on your chest. Yeah. <laughs> or, he also, they did that, uh, okay, we gotta stop talking about other Molly, shit. Oh shit, I just hit the pop filter, but oh, no. Molly Ringwald being like, fucking teenagers. That is my reaction yes. throughout most of this movie. Fucking teenagers. <laughs> Why do people even have children? <laughs> um, which okay, I'm, moving on. I'm quoting Steve Carell there. Okay. Uh, You'll see why. So Ren comes in, he talks about how his bike got stolen, and, you know, when he mentioned the stolen bike, it's like, well, how do we know that this doesn't already take place in Vancouver? Yeah. Also, that never comes back. He just kind of mentions it. Someone stole my bike. Yeah, that's I just his intro car. line. Repossessed. We're all so proud. I, I, I have this movie so, so memorized, <laughs> well, you okay? you really do. Okay, oh. I could do a one-woman show with this movie. All right. Like, I know it so much I could do a one-woman show. <laughs> <laughs> No, I love it. This is making this way easier. Like Um, that and She's the Man. Those are movies I can make a one-woman show about. (laughs) Oh, my God. Um, So So, they also, they go up to Alexa. Yeah, they go up to her bedroom. We're not going to call them by the characters' names because we don't remember any of them. Uh, Unfortunately, I do because I've seen this movie too much. Oh, okay. I I will say, it did come to a surprise. Like, wait, SpongeBob is named Russell? (laughs) Yeah. So that explains like, it. Was, he, they don't mention his name in the movie, and I'm so yeah. They only call him movie. SpongeBob. Yeah, I, I saw this movie so many times. Obviously, I could do a one woman show about it, <laughs> and I didn't know Evan Peters was named Russell. Why did they call him SpongeBob? I it's still don't never, know. It's never it's revealed. Nice. Like they he doesn't. He doesn't. He has. He's doing a weird performance, but it's not reminiscent of the cartoon Sponge Man. You know what I mean? Like it's not. Like he's just odd. Well. I, we just gotta keep moving on. Okay. So trudging on. So, so they, they go. go to her room. They go to her room. Side note: It's the bedroom that I wanted when I was twelve. It's fucking. It fucking slaps. It's got like multicolored walls and like. Oh yeah, cute it's a really nice bedroom. It's a super cute bedroom. Her bedspread is is like cute. It's like purple satin. Oh my god, it's so cute. It's like movie bedrooms that you wanted as a kid. Absolutely. Like that bedroom. I'll say my bedroom now. My bedroom looks like. Um, the bedroom of the main character in Shark Boy and Lava Girl. I don't remember what his bedroom Basi- looks like. Oh, basically, there are way too many wires and plugs in my room. Okay. So that's one thing. But anyways, it's like, honestly, kids in movies had so much cooler bedrooms than, like, real Absolutely. life. Absolutely. The set design in this movie in general, I really, really enjoyed. Um, so what did like you like about the movie? The set. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know it was good uh but yeah there's like scenes in a shopping mall and like that's really well set up and there's a school dance and there's a, a tree it's house a, i love that tree fa- that tree fort i love that oh, tree yeah tree fort movie tree houses are like cartoon tree houses always cooler than real or tree houses. yeah it's got like multicolored planks of wood and oh so cool I was like also julie apparently i know what this movie's about her growing up but how has she not like just went into that tree house to get stoned or something? Because <laughs> well, there's huge gaps in the slats, so her parents would easily catch her. There's nowhere to hide anything. You know what I mean? Are you speaking from experience? No, I've never, <laughs> I never had a tree house. Um, and <laughs> but, oh yeah, Jeff Garland plays her dad. Oh yeah, I, he's I was, really good in this as well. He's, good. he's another actor that I just I always enjoy him in things. Like, he's great. This movie is surprisingly star-studded. So, yeah, yeah, it's there's a lot of people 
Yeah. There's future Emmy winners, future Oscar winners. Future Tony winners? I don't know. Did Hunter Parrish oh, no, ever he, win a Tony? Oh, okay. Hunter Parrish didn't win anything for, for Spring Awakening. He oh. wasn't the original Melchior. That was John Groff. Oh. All right. Like, yeah. I also just think he's cute. He is cute. Hunter Parrish. <laughs> Anyway, um, so moving on, um, what we get from the next scene is that Alexa Vega holds up her underwear, and it's like, it just looks like underwear that a 14-year-old would wear. Yeah, it just, there's, yeah. There was, yeah, there's a weird amount of, like, focus on underwear in a certain part like of this movie. Like, women's underwear, and apparently your it's, in like, general, 14-year-olds though, are cool if they wear thongs, Yeah, and not cool like if they the pop- just wear yeah, the ordinary popular underwear. Girls, the popular girls have like thongs, thongs with their names embroidered on them, and it's like <laughs> I, I and mean, like, I like the commitment of like they're like gal pals. We got matching thongs. Like it's, <laughs> it's that's weird, and like and I mean, like honestly, Robin, you and I are really close, but I do not think we'll ever get to matching thong levels of friendship. You just you wait, um, <laughs> <laughs> but they also but they like steal a guy's boxers and like. <laughs> It's, there's a weird focus on underwear, and because this movie had a male director, I'm a little. That's a little sus, honestly. Like I'm uh, not not accusing anybody of anything, but like <laughs> I do know that directors sometimes do rewrites, and I. Well, yeah. Well, it's also I written by concerned. a woman, but like yes. I, well, also you have to know that when something is just just because it's written by someone doesn't mean that there wasn't a studio that was like mm-hmm. no add this, no add that. As yeah, studios, some producer came you. in and was like more panties. Oh, and panties for the 14 year old. Like, yeah. why can't the characters it's, just be in high school or something? No, they're 14. <laughs> they're 14 and they talk about underwear and they steal underwear and they, they sniff men's dogs. shoes. It's, we'll uh, get to that. We'll that, get to that. That was another moment that almost gave Robin an aneurysm. I hated that. Um, okay. But the, okay, also, we'll get to it. Also, there's a weird emphasis on feet at some points, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in that scene, it's, Alexa it's Vega's sus. underwear. I guess what else we understand we get from the scene is that um, her brother um, um, goes into her room and she's like, I need a lock on my door. So I guess she just can't ask her family to knock. Okay. Yeah. But then it goes transitions to like someone de- to Hannah deep frying Twinkies. Again, this movie made yeah. me want to try deep fried Twinkies. I've never tried a deep fried Twinkie. That but, sounds like, cool. Also. You know, now that I'm an adult and I can't eat like um like a little kid anymore, I'm like <laughs> I think I'll get a heart attack after one nibble. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, listen, I'm someone who's like I kind of eat like garbage. I just had a bunch of Korean fried chicken. I don't regret anything. But oh fried Twinkies is where I'm like, no, no. <laughs> It's like it's like that Rory Scovel joke where he talks about like stopping drinking in your thirties, and then it's like you can't even have one drink. You can't even like, I had I I got so messed up. I had one drink, and it wasn't even alcohol. It was soda, but I've been off it for so long. You know, it's like it's, <laughs> it's very that. So yeah, fried Twinkies. Maybe we could we could split one one time. But yeah, that's not. Oh, how romantic date night. <laughs> This no matching is th- the night. It's a beautiful nope. night. So like, I'm not down for the matching th- th- for the matching thongs, but I am down for the deep fried cookies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. So yeah, uh, what else do we get from the scene? Oh yeah, the mom's like, okay, I'm going out. Y'all better behave. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, that I guess is... I don't. Know, we're just gonna move forward. So yeah, the yeah. other two come over. That's oh Nancy. yeah. There's a quick montage yeah. of the girls getting ready. Yeah, for, <laughs> for the sleepover in which. One character puts on... I thought it was sunscreen, but you pointed out... Oh, it's not a montage getting ready. They're just having fun at their sleepover. Very G- PG sleepover, honestly. Oh, why did I think they were getting ready for this? Okay, so then... Okay, okay. Okay, it's a montage where, like, there's um, a nice, upbeat, mid-2000s pop song, which, okay, the soundtrack to this movie really slaps, so... Um, it's a good soundtrack. Yeah. But it there's also... Feels, it's so nostalgic to In me. the montage... Okay, so here's my so issue. So in the montage, it shows somebody painting their toes with whiteout. And so... You've never done that? Like, you've never put whiteout on your nails or something? Like, ooh, Yeah, yay. but I don't understand why it's in the... Mo- like, that was something that you did when you were bored at school. It wasn't like, a, mm-hmm. oh, we've got all these nail polishes and a whiteout. Let's do a French tip. You know what I mean? Like, it was... That was never... The move, and so, so I assumed it was like that was you know one of one of the like Yancey's character 
Like, I assumed yeah. it was kind of her because she was kind of set up to be a more unfortunate character. Oh, yeah. So oh, I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, maybe see. she's too poor to afford nail yeah. polish and she's using white out. <laughs> I thought it was like a character beat or something. But if okay, they were well, all yeah. together, then why weren't they sharing nail polish? Oh, yeah. Polish? Also, um, the other characters are Yancey and the redhead and her name is Farah, I think. Farah. They don't okay. say what her name is. Okay, here's what it says on <laughs> Wikipedia. Scout Taylor Compton as Farah James, Hannah and Julie's best friend and is known for being the fashionista of the group. I mean, she wears this pretty cool blazer, and I'm like, okay, yeah. she's going to, she's gonna like, realize that she's, like, bi or pan in high school. Yeah. Just, just you see. Mm-hmm. Anyways, like, she's actually one of my favorite characters in this movie, because <laughs> she's just, just fun, and her storyline's not weird, even though she doesn't have much to do. And she but really yeah. doesn't have much to do. Except for the one fashionista moment. So, yeah, everyone's just having fun, and, oh, there was that um, sunscreen thing that you were confused about. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I thought that that was... I thought oh, that was Yancy getting... For context, for context, in the movie, like, during the montage where they're just playing with makeup and stuff, Yancy's putting lotion on her face, and Robin thought it was sunscreen, even though it's night. Yeah, I was like, why is she putting on sunscreen for a nighttime hangout? I was so confused. Like, I'm pasty as hell. I don't put on sunscreen at night, though. You know what I mean? I put sunscreen on during the day. Yeah. Because I have to. <laughs> but, like... You have to. Yeah. So I didn't oh, and then it turns out it was just like, it's like that kind of... Self-tanner. It's like that self-tanner. Yeah, I don't know. I'm naturally tan, so I, I don't know that stuff. Yeah, also, that shit I've, makes you look orange. Yeah, like, she just looked like Donald Trump for a second, and it was not cute. Yeah, I'm just saying, I've had some pasty friends who are like, they've <laughs> done their tanning, and it's like, you guys look orange. You don't look like like what I look like yeah, in it's my never, natural tone. Yeah, like... Yeah, I've never used self tan or anything like that, and I just don't. I don't understand. Also, seeing a tanned redhead like that—you never see that in the world. Yeah, I don't. I don't tan. I just burn and freckle. That's all I do. I tan, and I've never gotten a sunburn. So, privilege, yay! That's the silver lining of being a person of color. (laughs) But anyways, um, um, yeah, it's just like a fun makeup montage, and like there's there's a lot of montages in this movie, but there's also a scene where like they put a bra in a freezer. And, like, yeah, I didn't know. Is that what people did at sleepovers? Because we just, like, the, well, had... I think, like, that was a thing, but I don't think they got why. Because the idea was, like, the first person to fall asleep would get their underwear put in the freezer or whatever. We never did that. I just heard about that from my older sister, that that was a thing at slumber parties at one point. So so they did it, but everybody's still awake, so it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, they're getting having a lot of fun until, like, three like 8 o'clock. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, this is all before eight o'clock. Like <laughs> yeah. they're gonna be tired at nine, like, oh fuck, I gotta sleep. Yeah, absolutely. But, anyway, so we yeah, cut we, to Sarah Paxton's character. She's yeah, in the car. Picked up by the guy who needs to be put on a list. Yeah, she's in the car her with her high two old boyfriend. Her two old boyfriend. They go to a field and he drives on the grass, which yeah. I always thought was weird. He I'm just like, parks in the middle of a. You can't just field. go to a weird lookout makeout point like they do in every like fifty slasher movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like. You know, with the li- right mood lighting and the right, like, score, that could be a horror scene. Yeah. Like, honestly, why didn't she tuck and roll? <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Yeah. Um, so but. they're... And I like... She, she has a line in that scene. They're talking about going to the dance, and he is mentioning that he might not want to go, and she gets all mad at him, and she's saying, I spent a month getting ready for this dance, and I did not understand that. How do you spend a month getting ready for anything i mean it's it's just a dance it's not like she's moving or she's yeah like you like do you renovations buy, or stuff like you might house. buy like what would you do to prepare for a dance ahead of time because there's like primping on the day obviously but then there's yeah. maybe primping on the week to the dance maybe, maybe like two so, weeks because you know. i know there are people who do take like prom and shit seriously i get so you like you buy a dress and you primp on the day so that's maybe two days of prep Two days, like spread if, out over maybe I don't know. But if she like, was doing something like losing weight or something like that in preparation it's for like, dances, girl, you are growing up. Your weight is gonna be really weird. Yeah, sometimes. But I, but I remember oh. doing that like before grad. I remember like going on a diet. Like a side note, dieting uh, ended up being really bad for my health, so I am against it now. But like. Yeah, Consult I remember. Your doctor, children. Yes, and talk adults. to your doctor. Also, just please. Also, just all the actors I know who think that going on crash diets are safe. Consult a doctor. Yes, I think we've learned from this pandemic that yes. doctors know what uh, what's up. Yeah, it it led to long term uh, 
issues in general. But yeah, but I do remember like trying to lose weight for grad events and stuff like that. So maybe that's what she meant by losing, but like also, getting ready for a month. You're fixating a lot on this one line. Because I just think I just didn't get, I'm sorry. Uh, we can move on. But this is not a moment that gave you an aneurysm, but it's just a moment that I guess confused you. It's just, it's, there are so many just weird little choices made in this movie. And that was one of them. But, okay. And yeah. then I feel the, like we'll be then, here. Well, I feel like this podcast her, is going to be three friend, hours long. Her friend, her, no, her friend, her boyfriend, air quotes, Todd tries to kiss her. She's like, no, get away. Because honestly, he's a dick. Mm-hmm. He's like, out, get out. You've forgotten who I am. <laughs> they kind of break up and she leaves the car. And he's like, you'll be so ruined in high school. I'm like, what does that even mean? <laughs> Again, weird school. line. You'll be so ruined in high school. What does like, that mean? Anyway, she when she leaves her in the middle of a field, yeah, that's really really sketch. Yeah, um, she calls her friend Brie Larson, who's like, "Hey, babe, I missed you. Turns <laughs> out I can't get you into the dance. Don't worry, I have another plan." Blah blah blah. Okay, and this is when we get introduced to Steve Carell, Paul like, Blart, Mall Cop. He's a he's a rent a cop or like he, yeah, it's like one of those security guards who's like, "You're not a cop, but you're not, but you're just here for security or something." Yeah, he took a two week training was, course. <laughs> So he comes up with his mustache, and here's the thing: whenever I see people with mustaches like that, it's like you are some kind of cop, or a cop in an '80s movie, not a cop right now, or you are like a security guard who takes their job too seriously. And he is definitely the latter. Um, <laughs> he, uh, Steve Carell's performance. Like side note, there is a reason that he became a huge star because even in this tiny bit part, he is selling it. He is doing. He is As so security committed. security guard who takes his job too seriously. Yeah, but he is, he's selling it. He's committed, and it's and the beats are funny, and he's, like, genuinely, I had a good time every time he was on screen. He's really good. He's, <laughs> he's really one of the good. best parts of this movie. He's one of the best parts of this movie. Like, no wonder so, he became a star. Yeah, he's, anyways, he goes to Julie's house, and he's like, yeah. turn it down. And, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird. Also, this is the first time they show the song I'm Wannabe by the Spice Girls, which is, yes. you'll hear it more. Oh yeah. That, <laughs> yeah, that song is iconic. And I love that. Problem telling me that she did witness some teenagers dancing like in public to wanna literally be. today. So it's, literally it's, today, as I was heading home from work, do. it's still a it, thing. It's something teenagers do. So like, yeah. that, it's fortunate that that song is still iconic. Yeah, it's yeah. Shout yeah. out to the Spice but Girls. Then, and then, anyways, uh, Sarah Paxton comes, and then this is when the plot gets set in motion. Mm-hmm. And um, she's... TLDR basically. Oh, this is the scene where like they. Like, through a web- webcam chat, like, Sarah Paxson calls her girlfriend, Brie Larson, with the two other girls, mm-hmm. and they're like, so what do you guys do tonight? And Brie Larson's like, we made matching thongs, and there's one for you. Uh, <laughs> that's so weird. I can't imagine. <laughs> like, I cannot imagine. Oh, wait, no, it's not matching thongs. It's thongs with their names on them, which like, is still kind of weird. It's so, like, maybe this is just because I'm openly queer. Like, I was openly queer in high school, and girls immediately kind of cooled to me in ter- like in terms of, in a lot of ways in high school mm-hmm. like but i cannot imagine pitching that idea and having them be like yeah you Thoughts know what with I- our names on the hall. it's that's such a weird choice it doesn't come <laughs> back in any way it's such a weird character like i don't understand <laughs> i don't understand why it's in there now i have the image of like a bu- like a bunch of girls having a sleepover and the mom's like don't do anything crazy and it turns out they're just monogramming thongs yeah yeah, yeah they've got like a little they've got it set in like a needle point loom and they're just <laughs> that's, that's what they're doing like, oh. nope they will be ruined in high school yeah what do you do all night we monogram thongs what that's so weird <laughs> But also, like, imagine, like, imagine hooking up with a girl and she's got a thong with her name on it. And you're like, oh, well, this is like, where'd you get this? And they're like, my friends and I made them like. <laughs> I mean, I gotta be honest, that sounds like something that you do, like, but when you're an adult in your 20s and you acknowledge it's fucking weird. But also, you're adults. Just do what you want, honestly. Yeah, it just feels like a weird thing to have underage girls do. Like, like maybe, like I could see some adult, like adult friend groups maybe doing it, but the yeah. fact that it was these like middle, li- literally middle schoolers <laughs> who are on the cusp of going to high school, monogramming thongs. It's such a weird. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. This movie is full of like little weird moments. It feels like we're fixating on little things, and it's because we, we are. are. Like, because the but we have to save our energy for all the stuff that almost gave Robin a heart oh. attack. Yeah, we're not even at like the best parts yet. This is the no. crazy part. Okay, of this. moving on. So yeah, the sli- the plot. Um, there's a scavenger hunt. They gotta get all these things. Winner has to 
when well winner has to winner gets to sit at the fountain in the high school yes. that's so important losers sit in the dumpsters because apparently there's no cafeteria in the school it's, this poor underfunded inner city high school it's such a weird like that high school was it, where you sit in high school doesn't matter it really doesn't yeah, again, matter. Like, there's no people designated in high school, spots. They literally sit in the hallways, like, in the corner, but it's... people literally just sit on the floor in the hallways because, like, fuck, I'm too tired to find a place to actually sit. Yeah. It doesn't it's, matter. It's a deeply weird premise. and But, you know, it sets the stakes, at least. So, like, what's on the list? Um, first, they got to go to this club. Also, yeah, 14-year-olds in a club. Yeah, they've got to find a guy on a dating site and get him to buy them a drink at the Cosmic Club. Is that the name of Cosmo it? Cosmo Club. Cosmo Club. Oh, my God. Very mid-2000s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, so. yeah, anyways. So, they go out, and, like, Brie Larson's character picks up her girlfriend, Sarah Paxton. And, like, oh, Robin was like, how is this? These are middle schoolers. Why does Brie Larson drive? Yeah. And I'm like, wait for it. There's a line that goes, how can Liz drive? She was held back a year. She already has her learners. Yeah. She's so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I've told you, I could do a one-woman show with oh my this. God. Like, I was, like, holding my breath, like, no, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. It's, oh, that, I loved that. That genuinely made <laughs> me laugh when we were watching it, because it did answer She's a question so that I had. Um yeah, so they end oh, yeah. up driving to the Cosmo Club. They've matched up with a guy on the Oh, right. First dating of all, uh, Julie puts on this red dress, and then you yes. know, we have to prove that redhead um, Farrah, Scout uh-huh. Taylor Compton, is the fashionista of the group. Oh, yes. So she, she does the thing the in movies where you just, like, rip off, like, part of the dress and to make it look cool. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, this is mid 2000s fashion is something I do not like to talk about. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, a lot of choices being made in that era, um, like in every era, I think. But yeah, well, so they have this. Yeah, one. that's true. The thing about it, too, is like you can clearly see what the dress is supposed to look like. But then they've added these like sleeves that are because like the dress is red and then it's got like a burgundy hem and burgundy sleeves and she like chops off the burgundy parts and it's like oh wow cute red dress and it's like yeah and it's like a three second montage and yeah it's like, da-da, da-da, like with good electric guitars and it's like first montage that lasts <laughs> less than 10 seconds like okay yeah but she but okay. she's looking all cute and they go to the she's club good. and then uh oh yeah and it turns out that the guy well, also she pretends to be like a swimsuit model. Oh or, right, yeah. Alexa Vega pretends to be a swimsuit model named June. Yeah. And then the person that she met on the dating website who buy her a drink turns out to be her middle school teacher. Who'd been previously sprayed in the face with silly string. It's that yeah, same guy. And, and he's like, you know, he's painted as like he's supposed to be a nerd who like gets stood up and stuff. Like when he oh yeah, when he finds out like, oh my god, this is one of my middle school students, he doesn't freak out enough, T B H to me, because that was, I would actually be like, Okay, get the f- heck out yeah, of here. Even if like, I didn't know them, if I found out that the person I was talking to that I thought I was on a date with was a fourteen year old person at a club with alcohol, I would be like, Where are your like, parents? We're, we're adults, <laughs> we'd be like Oh, we know where her mom is, but we were like, get out, (laughs) go. Like, no, you should not be here. Go get out before anyone gets in trouble. And also, side note, they frame it, like you were saying, they frame it as if her teacher is some unfortunate nerd. This teacher's a snack. Let's be real. I mean, he was wearing, like, those trendy nerd glasses before it was trendy. (laughs) Okay, also, in the mid-2000s, like, you know, the worst glasses, like, the wire, like, oval-ish glasses were popular, and I... I do, or like they were a thing, and I actually detest those glasses okay. with a burning passion. Okay. But he was wearing those hipster nerd glasses before they were popular, so. Yeah, he looks cute. And so it's, he looks it's fine. yeah, and then later, oh yeah, and then later they do that thing where it's like, take off your glasses and you'll be hot. And so he tries it, and then immediately some woman is like, would you like to dance? It's like glasses, loose and tie. I'm like, honestly, dude, maybe you just need to go to a different scene to find like a significant other. Yeah. It's like, if you don't like clubbing, that's fine. Oh wait! I just realized what what did we miss? We did we miss the um old navy scene? Oh wait, no, no, wait, no, no, that's next. Pop? No, I have that next in my notes. Okay. <laughs> oh wait, no, 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 you're right. Okay, no, so you're right. we the had first that thing. They, oh wait, no, or did we ha- miss the scene with like the celery and brownies? Oh yeah! Oh my god! The other scene yeah. that almost gave Robin an aneurysm. Yeah. Like, so Yancey is. So, so they're arriving in the car, and this, they're driving in this really small, like, 
smart car that's apparently electric powered and Yancey's like no guys ever wave at me I'm fat she talks about how Stacy and Liz made her stand on scales like in their gym lockers and that shit is actually traumatizing like yeah you, know, you find some therapy after that yeah and she like and she is a bigger girl but she's not like she's super cute and so they're just like and she seems super sweet as well so it's yeah like, so that was, yeah, that was a, a bummer. Um, but yeah, then but one, one of her friends is like, well, would you rather eat celery or brownies? And she's like, is that a trick question? And so this bitch is like, so just date a guy who likes to date, who likes to eat brownies. It's that easy. <laughs> and it's, but it's, she's honestly better advice to be like, honestly, girl, you are sweet and really cute and you have clear skin. There's going to be someone who's falling for you. Yeah, she has just excellent saying. skin. Aside from oh, yeah, the self-tanner these- scene. <laughs> oh, yeah. All these teenagers have unrealistically nice skin, so yeah. we'll just throw that out there. But yeah, and also for the, yeah. for the record, I know quite a few skinny men who like bigger women, so like it, mm-hmm. eating celery or eating brownies, it like that's not, you d- don't worry about like sticking with your type or whatever. Like date date somebody that you find attractive who finds you attractive and or date someone with a nice personality. And I actually mean that. Oh yeah. I'm I'm just saying like yeah. you I just, just I know some people who are like really good looking on the outside, but I know that they're just garbage people on the inside. <laughs> yeah, um, we've all known that person. But oh, moving absolutely. on, anyways, that <laughs> while, while Robin was trying to comprehend that scene, I had like, is she having him like a mini seizure or something? Because she just went still for a second, Me? like trying to comprehend things. Yeah, I was oh. like, are you okay? And well, just that face you made when you were comprehending that. I scene yeah, of I just that, celery versus I've, brownies. That scene just broke my brain. I, I was so incredulous. It was like really. That's what you're boiling it all down to. That's the formula for love is like. We just date guys who like brownies. Yeah. And then, okay. And then they go to Old Navy and on the list, they have to dress a mannequin in Old Navy. Sponsored by Old Navy. Yeah. In their clothes. So they, and because Stacy and Liz already did the one, the the female mannequins, they have to go to the male mannequins. And then we get another montage. Yeah. We're freeze frame plays and, and. Uh, Steve Carell mall cop is there. Uh, like he's just out in like public, like just chilling. Yeah, and behind him, yeah. like in the old navy display, these fourteen year old girls are running amok and like trying to like yeah, put trying their, to dress the mannequins. They're four, They're like girls, girls' clothes onto these big ma- male mannequins. Mm-hmm. And then whenever Steve Carell turns around, they do the mannequin challenge and then freeze. They freeze, and for some reason, he's just like, yep. Seems legit. And then he turns back around. And then a few seconds, he'll be, like, checking on his reflection in, in, like, another store window. And then he'll turn back around. And he just, like, does that a few times in this. But it's also set to, like, a really catchy song. Okay, gotta admit, that mon- that scene is kind of Yeah, I like that iconic. song. I've heard, I don't remember where it's I've like, heard that song before. Freeze frame! Yes. Now freeze! <laughs> I have heard I'm, that song get, somewhere before. But, yeah, that's what they gotta do. And I know it's juvenile, but I still think that scene is really funny. Yeah, that scene cracked me up. Because it's like, it's so dumb, but they play it straight. And again, Steve Carell is Steve, Yeah, Steve Carell just Carole sells it. He's, yeah, he's cop. great. As Paul Blart Malcolm. As Paul Blart Malcolm. <laughs> um, but eventually he catches on. He's like, I got you guys. But the thing is, you're, you're a rental cop, but do you have to go after these 14-year-old girls in an old Navy? Yes. <laughs> He goes like into the display with them, and of course they outsmart him and they lock him in. Yeah, they. And then he's they... like, "Oh, that is so not cool." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that line. <laughs> uh, he has a lot of really good one. Li- he's got some good lines movie. too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're back. It's okay. So that happens before they're in the club. Also, even before they that, even before that, SpongeBob and his friends, for some reason, break into Alexa Penavega's house. house. Well, I've just realized that's why they need the mall cop guy. Oh, this is like that looks like a nice neighborhood. Yet there's like people jumping into houses. And yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Can you imagine this movie from the perspective of the neighbors? Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> so much suspicious activity. Um, like, honey. Corkies are doing something again. <laughs> ah, just forget it, Linda. But honey, it looks like something's gonna happen. <laughs> oh but yeah. Also, the the guys breaking in. I just realized there's another. They're doing like a panty raid kind of thing. Like they're yeah, grabbing as, like because it's totally the 1980s now. Yeah. So the, again, there's this weird theme of underwear. Like I don't know why that's in there, but and it then is. Evan Peters grabs a bra. It's like ching. 
I found bras. Oh my god. I and then hate I was, Oh yeah, that. wait, where are the girls? Where are the babes? <laughs> yeah, no, where are the babes? I hated that line so much. <laughs> To be um, honest, Evan Peters is delivering all his lines with this very unnerving energy. It's very... Which I realized I would take this over, like, boring. Yeah, I like, feel like it could... It, I mean, yeah. It's it's a very weird performance, but I also <laughs> did kind of love it. Like, I hated it, but I also loved it. It was very, very good, bad energy coming from that <laughs> performance. Like, that is, you know, that's what the show is about. Like, so bad it's good. That was kind of, yeah. that was kind of Evan Peters' anyways, performance in this whole thing. Hunter, Hunter Parrish, like, knocks something over and then the dad dancer was like, girls, what's going on? He goes up and guess what the guys have to do? They have to They have to dance to Wanna Be by Robin? the Spice Girls while wearing wigs that, so they look like the girls, because there are just four wigs in the room <laughs> <laughs> and, then the, and then the dad goes in, he sees a dancing, like, okay, so it looks legit. Yeah. I also like that they're singing along, but in these, like, <laughs> falsetto voices. Because <laughs> they're like, really, 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 really. like, this is what women sound like. Yes. Yep. All right. Great. Hunter Parrish, Broadway singer. <laughs> I also loved the way he was wearing the wig, where it was like, when you saw him from the back, it was like just black hair. But when you saw him from the front, you could see his blonde hair and the black hair of the wig. <laughs> Oh, they put on those wigs and shit real easy. Oh. Like, really, really quick. Like, guys, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, they were, they were ready. They were committed. Yeah. And then when it's done, Hunter Parrish looks to Evan Peters. He's like, if you tell anyone about this, I will so injure you. Yeah, that light. <laughs> I will so Again, injure they can't you. swear. So, like. That was, yeah, that cracked yeah. me up. They can't be like, say what. I'm pretty sure a 14 year old would say, like, "Dude, I'm gonna rip your fucking balls off" or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. That was the f- that's knows? the fun part of like watching movies about 14 year olds versus being 14. Because like we swore, I didn't so we much because I was like a I was a wimp. But like <laughs> now I don't give a fuck about swearing. But I a lot of my friends swore a lot when we were teenagers, and it did like it didn't matter. Teenagers swear but, and stuff, but it's also funny watching media is like it's about 14 year olds they just can't swear it's like ah even though 14 no. like actual 14 year olds do swear i'm just saying hey um i started i'm just saying the first time i heard a swear word i was around grade two mm-hmm. so and i've told this to rob and she's like oh that's very late so, <laughs> well like, i to hear the f word for the first time I went to public school and I heard many swears before the age of seven. Um, but I went to a public school too. I think I was just ignorant most of the time. Okay, but cool. Yeah. Anyways, the SpongeBob and the crew decide to go on on a scavenger hunt as well because like they see it on Julia's computer because she apparently doesn't like have a screensaver or anything. Yeah, she just leaves everything. And then we're at the club scene with the teacher. Yes, yes, yes. And the teacher almost having a heart attack, but again, he didn't freak out enough because i would be yeah so much yeah more. that whole dynamics also when he first saw her she like she just wore sunglasses and he didn't recognize her don't you know it's like clark kent glasses yeah is yeah it was i mean i will say something about uh wearing glasses to hide your identity sometimes i wear like fake glasses just because i feel like it and i was at a reading event like for mm-hmm. a script reading, mm-hmm. and there these two people talking about a film competition that I was in, and mm-hmm. I was the leading role in my film, and I'm like, oh, I was in that, and they just looked at me like, you were? Which one? Like, oh, I was in this film, and they're like, no, were you? And when I take off the glasses, they're like, oh, it was you. Yeah, I mean, like, so s- it's possible. Side note about the Superman Clark Kent thing, like, I remember hearing once, I think it was Dolly Parton once lost a Dolly Parton lookalike contest, so like, <laughs> people are dumb, so I to like, I don't think that that's unrealistic yeah, anymore i'm just saying that maybe people would say like you're not superman superman is taller or something like that yeah he parts his hair on the other side of his head <laughs> which but is anyways, for real yeah. that was how they styled christopher reeve by the way they styled his hair they styled his they parted his hair one Mr. way for clark Chris kent reeves. Mm-hmm. okay there's yes. the teacher blah 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 the teacher he he's like okay get ginger ales for yes, these two it was, because he still understands he still understands like oh you guys are on a schedule yeah they need to get to somebody needs the fountain spot but also he talks about like the fountain spot like oh i was there too and i didn't oh, go oh yeah 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 or, like, i didn't like sit at the fountain what, like, what like, is it's, this fountain who cares There's no tables are you gonna eat off your knees <laughs> like a tv dinner yeah, who is that was such a weird plot point um and then they yeah they realize 
They get the picture. They give him the little um, <laughs> the makeover. And now onto the thing that gave Robin an aneurysm. Well, it didn't give me an aneurysm. I just loved it. Jane Lynch is at the club and Alexa... She's on a platform. She's, by the yeah, way. she's on a platform. She's out there dancing like a go go girl. It's awesome. Um, but like she's having, her, she's having the time of she her life. Is, so good for her. She's grooving and shaking. Uh, she is shaking that booty. Oh yeah, the DJ is like, yeah, older baby, shaking that booty. <laughs> and I had to pause because Robin looked like she was gonna faint. I, I we had to go back and listen to that line again because I loved it so much. What did you think that he, the DJ was? Well, said? okay, so I didn't quite hear the last two syllables at first and so I was like did he just say poontang <laughs> and then I real and then you went back and I was like oh boote okay but he said it weird so I I it wasn't weird that I heard that <laughs> so yeah we went back and like basically Alexa Vega she drops her scarf and then the mom uh, uh, Jane Lynch comes out and finds the scarf she's like huh I didn't bring my scarf. And then she sees her daughter and she's like, hmm, which is, maybe I should. Which is oh, also yeah. weird because, like, if I was out at a club and I hadn't brought my scarf and I found a scarf that looked just like it, I'd be like, oh, they made more than one of these scarves. Somebody else probably bought one. Like, I wouldn't it's immediately like, I got assume. this at H&M. Yeah. Like, other would, people got this. I would assume that it was mass produced <laughs> and, like, somebody out there has the same one. I wouldn't assume I think my teenage daughter stole my scarf and is now at this club. Like, if she takes a, it's a real yeah. leap that she makes. And I get why, because it's, you know, it's a, movie. it's a movie. But, but yeah. But anyway, <laughs> she goes to a payphone to call, and then, mm-hmm. like, she goes to make a phone call on a payphone. In case you children don't know, um, a payphone is a phone that you pay for. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's wall-mounted in, like, the back of the club, and you put coins in it, and then you lift up the the receiver and then you place a phone call <laughs> and it's it, anyway, they used to oh, be we everywhere to the whole, <laughs> we have to mention the whole like yancey subplot so yancey is oh, waiting yes. outside of the club because pharaoh went to get coffee mm-hmm. in the middle of the night girl you gotta sleep <laughs> but anyways um a guy walks up to her and they start flirting mm-hmm. also we don't know how old that guy is so it's like uh, well he says something about i do this during the summer so we can assume that he's at least, like, mm. you know, middle school or high school aged, probably. Yeah, because, I mean, I've never met an adult. Like, when adults at least talk about summer jobs, it's like, it, they don't talk about it like that. But anyways. Yeah, so I think um, he's, a, he's they, supposed to be They have in high a school. cute little moment. And yeah. he's a bit of a bigger guy, too. So, mm-hmm. like. <laughs> I think he might like brownies. <laughs> oh. Wow. Don't you know that only, you can only be with people of your body type. Yeah. I also, I feel like I ruined him for you a little bit when I mentioned that he looked like Ben Shapiro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Because <laughs> he does kind of look like, he's got a way kinder energy and like just seems like an overall better person. Like but he his does. Voice is a little like ha- weaselly, <laughs> but not as annoyingly weaselly as Mr. Sharpie Hero. Also, I will say I did unfriend a lot of people last year because they unfortunately agreed with Ben Shapiro. They're like, maybe he has something smart to say. I'm like, <sighs> maybe he's just maybe he's just a victim of confirmation bias. Um, yeah, is that the right way to phrase that? I don't know. It just seems like that's a charitable way of saying it. Anyway, let's not. It doesn't matter. Anyways, Mr. <laughs> ben Sharpie Hero over there. <laughs> Um, yeah. so yeah, anyways, thanks for ruining that, Sorry. The, the, like, <laughs> nicest guy in this movie. <laughs> Sorry. So anyways. He is, like, um, one Yancy's, of the nicest. Yancy, <laughs> but it's also, like, the bars on the ground, because, like, Yancy's like, oh, why are you talking to me? Guys only talk to me if they need me to hold a door open. He's like, well, it was nice meeting you, and I never asked you to open a door, or to hold open a door. I'm like. I mean, that's kind of a smooth line. But again, the Whoa. bar is on the ground for male love <laughs> Be still my beating heart. I mean, maybe to a middle schooler audience, like, that was, okay, like, that's kind of sweet. That shit's kind of cute. Yeah. I, but I guess. But as an adult, it's like, thanks for ruining it with the Ben Shapiro thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Robin um, Caldwell, ruining your childhood movies since whenever. Um, Yeah. I also, so I also on. just would like to point out that I think it's fun. Like, as a queer woman, I enjoyed seeing Jane Lynch go out for a night of dancing with her other short-haired lady friend. Because <laughs> in my head, it was just kind of like, oh, they're having a, they're having a gal pal Girls, night. Man. Gal pal night, they're going <laughs> to monogram their thumbs. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, 
<laughs> so, so moving on, uh, Jane Lynch makes the call. And then um, uh, Alexa Vega's like, oh, shit, we got to go. I got to go home. And then she grabs Evan Peters, the skateboard, to skateboard mm-hmm, home. Mm-hmm. Oh, she goes past um, her love interest, Steve, in the Jeep. Yeah. In slow motion. Yep. And he's like, who is that? Yeah. And her friend, and his friend's like, I don't know. I also like but, that as she's skating away, she does a, a kickflip just because. <laughs> like, she's oh, on yep. her way somewhere. This is a mode of transportation, but she just kind of is like, oh, I'm just going to do all this for fun. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just saying, also from a movie standpoint, why not establish her skateboarding skills earlier on or something? I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of like editing and stuff and yeah. thinking like, I think that'd be cooler. What if they introduced her as like a skater girl? Yeah. Like, I feel she like... was a skater girl. He said, see you later, girl. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But it was also, like, there's that scene... Okay, I'm skipping ahead, but there's a scene near the end where Jane Lynch is, like, talking about what she was like as a child, and I was, like, waiting for that moment where she was, like, this rough-and-tumble girl who liked to skateboard or whatever, and, and that didn't come up, so I was like, oh, she has no background in this? Are we just supposed to believe that she just hopped on a skateboard and rode it for a really long time and did not fall once? Like... I'm just saying... And like, could do I a wrote- kickflip? Like, it's just... It's, I'm going to say, every time I've rode a skateboard in the middle of Walmart, I've fallen on my ass <laughs> and hope that no one watched. Because <laughs> I'm like, this is cool. I should get a skateboard. Wee! Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that happens. And then um, she goes home. She climbs. She goes home in the nick of that time mm-hmm, to convince mm-hmm. her mom, don't worry, mom, we're all here. Just me and my friends are still here. Trust me. Mm-hmm. And then her friends swing around to pick her up. And, yeah, what else? Oh, I think there's also the pizza scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, the, the, they ordered pizza at the beginning of the sleepover. And then while they're out, the it finally gets delivered. And her brother and the dog are like, let's eat, eat it, it all. <laughs> and then there's this scene where they're just like lying there, just bloated and farting. And I, But it's also like, just hide them. Yeah. Maybe have a few slices. Put like some strategically placed like a crust at, or, like somewhere in the room. Yeah. There's, me, but, but, like, there's, don't force feed them. There were better ways to go about this than just, like, making yourself sick. Um, but I guess it's like, a comedy, they so they really, did. really, really fast. They could just eat it normally. Like, yeah, well, yeah. There's also, he's just, like, wolfing it down. It's like, you could just, you could eat, you could just eat it at a normal rate. Like, also, dude, y'all are giving me a stomach ache just staring at, like, them going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That made, that, yeah, that so, honestly yeah, made anyways, me a little sick. The friends in the car. <laughs> We're adults, yeah. clearly. The friends swing around, they pick her up, and then they have to get the boxer shorts of Steve Phillips. She breaks into his house, and she... Yep. You know, former spy kid, she can do that. Yeah, um, and so she, yeah, she breaks into his house, and then there's a scene where she just, like, sees his skateboard, and there's a shoe lying nearby, and she's like, whoa, a skateboard. And then she goes over to the shoe and, like, picks it up and holds it to her nose and sniffs it. Ugh. I hated it. I hated that so much. On what planet would a girl see a teenage boy's, like, I don't even care. Like, if you're into feet, like, whatever the fuck, like, I don't care. Teenage boy feet are the, like, teenage feet in general are the worst ones. You do not want that near you. Like, I don't care if you like feet smell, like, fucking whatever, like, do whatever makes you happy. But, like, t- like, no. Why would you want... They're just rank and terrible. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. Also, we should talk about how unsafe this neighborhood is. Like, you can just break into houses. Yeah, everybody... Well, or maybe it's just the neighborhood is really safe and everybody just leaves everything unlocked. Because, I mean, there are some neighborhoods like that where it's just, you know, a cul-de-sac and everybody feels safe and they just leave everything unlocked. Neighborhoods in, like, sitcoms where it's like, the neighbor comes by, hi, neighbor, just right through the door. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's yeah, she goes live. in and um, to, she evades the her love interest and the two friends. Also, no one in this movie has peripheral. Yeah, vision, she's probably. like tumbling around, like <laughs> and running in places, and they're just like at like... least in Spy Kid, she had all the gadgets and stuff. Yeah, but anyway, she hides by going into like the shower behind the curtain. Oh, and also, sorry, real quick thing about the oh, um, the peripheral vision. One of the reasons he doesn't see her is because he's reading the yearbook. Because he was like, I think I know that girl in the red dress. Because when he saw her skateboarding, and so he's looking through the yearbook and he finds her and he's like, Whoa, I think this is the girl. And there's just thing that I noticed where and I noticed this earlier too with the dating website like people's hobbies are listed as weird are listed as nouns for some reason 
Do you know? Do you get what I'm saying? Well, I mean, like hobbies can be nouns, but like. But so verbs. You want it to be like verbs. Yeah. Like, what's your hobby? Um, reading. Yeah. Cooking. Baking. Yeah. Not that kind but of bacon. Of her, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. But one of her hobbies was hot dogs. <laughs> And also earlier on the dating app, the teacher, one of his hobbies was sunsets. These aren't hobbies. I mean, like I you could have said watching sunsets. Watching the sunset. That's nice. Like eating hot dogs. Like I just didn't. I just it's <laughs> or like I mean sitting on the beach, long walks on the beach. I mean, if someone took me to do that, I'm like, yeah, okay, thank you. Oh yeah, like I but, it's I just it's. Yeah, maybe this is just, like, my inner, like, grammar snob, but, like, I feel like it shouldn't have been <laughs> phrased that way. It bothered me. I just, again, again I, weird little choices this movie makes. Oh yeah. Also, wait, quick note. I'm looking at the Wikipedia article. Steve Carell's character is named Officer Sherman Shiner. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> also, uh, Stacy, Sarah Paxton's character, it's Stacy with an I. So I'm like, wow. okay, that's a weird... It's not even Stacy with a Y. It's Stacy with an I. I'm like, well, okay, your parents never loved you. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, okay, if anybody listening has a first name that ends in I, we do not mean to discriminate against you. But your parents didn't love you. So, I'm sorry. This is terrible. Um, I'm just saying, like, my cousin is eight, and I'm just like, we go to a playgrounds a lot, and I'm like, Pretty sure all the there are a bunch of little girls here that are named like Michaela, but in the worst, spelt the worst way possible. Yeah, there's like an ampersand in the letter eight in there, and it's <laughs> it doesn't even make any like phonetical Mikaelin sense. Or like Michaelin or Braxton. Or We're gonna alienate Bryston. so many. I heard of a guy named Bryston, and it's like. Bryce is already a bit of a douchey name. You didn't okay. have to add the Bryce to oh at God. the end. If we have any younger listeners, we have definitely alienated them with this episode by calling teenagers stupid and making fun of <laughs> all of their names. Not all of their names. But okay, maybe all of their names. But like, <laughs> Oh, God. Anyways, moving on from the Braxtons and the Brystons and the McCalins. Um so while she's breaking into the the guy's house <laughs> to steal house. his boxers because this movie is fucking weird, her <laughs> friends are outside and they've realized that the electric car has run out of power and so they're trying to find a place to plug it in. And while and they find a plug, but it's too far away, so they're pushing the car forward, which, like, I've, I've helped push a car before. They're not very light. It's a heavy job and only two of them are doing it and it somehow gets away from them and careens <laughs> down the street and like that's not how physics works but okay and then I mean, it, it would make more sense if that place was on a hill but that'd be like well it's not R. R. the it car looks like a plane. Run. it's very flat and so anyway it goes careening into steve curl's mall steve cop car <laughs> and then the um airbag, airbag goes off pops up yeah. in his face and he Gets off pretty unscratched from that, but yeah. Yeah, he's fine. But also, while this is happening, uh, Julie is hiding in the shower, and her love interest comes into the shower, turns it on. Apparently, he doesn't, he's not that paranoid person who just looks in behind yeah, the shower. Yeah, does not curtain, look behind the shower. Just in case. Curtain. Yep. Just in case. Yeah, immediately starts but, disrobing. She watches him. It's frankly quite creepy. Um, yep, and then something, um, oh yeah, and then because the, there was the car collision outside. His friend is like, whoa, check this out. So he throws on a towel and goes. And then Alexa Penavega hops out the shower, grabs his boxers, hits that the road. That he was just wearing. Jesus. Yeah, probably sniffed those too, the fucking weirdo. Uh, ah, I just, I'm so, you're gonna I just offended. You're going to make it impossible for me to watch this movie. He's out of there. She gets the boxers. But then as she's leaving the house, um, uh, Steve Carell finds her and he's like, yo, I was just hit by a tiny green car and now you're here. It turns around the car is gone like mm-hmm. apparently the three other girls they like have superman super strength that just went yeet and yeah and pulled it back up the road i guess it's uh yeah so like maybe that's like um yancy's secret power or something she's super like swole yeah 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 <laughs> this is like um, and they're like jesus yancy it's good that she's on our side <laughs> so they get back in the car and then oh yeah and that one of the things on the uh uh scavenger hunt list was to steal a, a decal the decal of yeah. the mall cops yeah so she grabs that so and then makes her great escape interrogated by the mall cop yes so yeah she grabs that and while spongebob evan peters makes a distraction <laughs> oh my god you gotta talk about the hero face oh yeah because yeah, like what's, Ju- what's the julie concept? is being like is being like interrogated by the mall cop and hannah's like she's trapped she needs a hero 
And then Evan Peters is like, that's going to be me. And he puts on this weird Yeah, he does this like that's... weird lopsided smirk. And that was the moment where I was like, oh, he's Garth on steroids. Because it was reminding me of like the way that Dana Carvey holds his mouth when he's playing Garth Algar. <laughs> um, so that was, yeah, it was also just a weird choice for heroic. Evan Peters made a lot of know. strange choices for this movie. Sorry. But I'm getting like the sense that the director, they didn't give him a note. He's just like, okay, Evan, keep doing what you're doing. Which yep. I feel like is kind of worse of a note to give. Because, <laughs> like, I've had directors who are like, I like what you're doing. Can you also do this, this, and that? But I've never had a director who's like, yeah, 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 just keep it doing it. You're doing fine. Yeah, that's fine. Just drink another Red Bull and we'll keep rolling. It was, yeah. yeah. totally. It's, it's cool. It's cool. They have a PA with the Red Bull for Mr. Peters. Yeah. So. Who I think would have been, like, a teenager at the time. So it's like, oh, great. You're souping up all these teenagers. Yeah. On Red Bull. But anyways, <laughs> Evan Peters, the cause of the distraction, Alexa Peña Vega grabs the, the decal of the mall cop thing. Yeah. And then runs away in the tiny green car. Yeah. And then they and then head to the dance because that was the final. They have to get all the things and then meet up in the parking lot. Oh, no, at so the... They go. Yeah, they go past. Um, like they go past Stacy and Liz who are getting like juicers for themselves like girlfriends. Yep. Gal pals. I mean, I'm just saying, like, Brie Larson's character is definitely simping for us Sarah Paxson <laughs> over there. Yeah, you could definitely read her character as, uh, as a little queer, probably. A <laughs> Maybe this is just because we're both queer and watching it. But, I know, uh, but it's like, I feel like any movie can be a queer movie if you look at it the right way. Yeah, you just got to put on your gay the, goggles and then everyone's gay. Uh, maybe not the movies we watched, because I remember after we collided was very aggressive. Very straight, yes. I mean, they so all the groups they meet at the dance, they have all the exact same things. So it's like, okay, what else do, are we going to get? We're going to get the crown of this. I don't know. I, don't, I want to say homecoming, but it's like it's the it's end like, of the Yeah, year, this so weird end of year dance senior prom? that has Because like my pro, the dance. prom for my school, it actually took place after grad and stuff. Okay. I think. I think I don't know. I didn't go to my prom. Okay, but yeah, it's got like honestly, a. I, did, I didn't care. Okay, but. but yeah, it's got like a dance king and a dance queen, I guess. Um, yeah, so they go up into the dance, and the girls they meet the ticket girl who is played by Summer Glau. Yes, and um, here's another moment that made Robin look I, like she was gonna. I just she I, needed ten years of academic study. I just needed a, I needed a minute logic. after this scene. So so Alexa sees. The ticket girl. Summer Glau. Yeah, the ticket girl. Like, Summer Glau's like, no ticket, no dance. And then <laughs> Alexa's like, I know who you are. You do AP algebra. You play m- too much Monopoly with your with, with your parents. Yeah. And you've never sat at the fountain. <laughs> and in a few years, I'm going to be you if I don't get into this dance. And it's like, this is Summer fucking Glau. <laughs> It's so weird. She just immediately, like, she just, based on almost nothing, like, the fact that this girl is taking tickets instead of inside at the dance, she projects all this stuff onto her and is like, your <laughs> life fucking sucks, and I'm going to have your life, and I don't want that, so let me into this gymnasium full of streamers <laughs> right now. That's And it works! It works! Summer Glau was like, you're right, yeah. my life is miserable, and I'm going to help you, young me, and lets her into the dance. <laughs> yep. but it's also weird. Like this is Summer Glau. All the nerd girls love her, or like nerd boys. Nerd nerds everyone. Love her. Yeah. Nerd. Like clearly, I'm. I can't take out queer mind because my queer mind because it's like, oh yeah, the girls love her. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Summer Glau's great. So yeah. It. Anyways, one Summer Glau's like go, go into the dance. It's treated as like a triumphant moment, but it's also like, that's Summer Glau. Also, <laughs> what is wrong with like? playing monopoly with your family i play monopoly with my little cousin all the time he loves it he doesn't know how to play but he loves it (laughs) but like what's wrong with that also she's doing ap algebra good for her i fucking suck at algebra i hated math but she's like doing ap she's probably getting into a good college yeah good for her realistic (laughs) yeah realistic version of the scene would be like i'm doing ap algebra you know i got into princeton or something like that we stand a queen of academia I got into USC and I didn't even have to bribe anyone. So, <laughs> so yeah, so that's a weird scene. The fact that it works, that was what made me die a little bit inside. Uh, it was great. And uh, so, yeah, so then they're in the dance. Um, and Stacy notices that her boyfriend, who said he Todd. wasn't going, Todd, yeah, is at the dance. And he's with <gasps> another girl. Another 
Okay, also, I am, I'm looking at um, the cast list. The actor who plays Todd is named Thad Luckinville. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Sorry, Thad. Um, your parents didn't love you either. Oh, my God. I love the name Thad. Just name him John. Just, I don't know. Just reminds me, there's this lady who was, like, reviewing, like, um, Breaking Dawn, Twilight, and when she heard that Bella named her child Renee Esme, she's like, just name her Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, like, okay. Yeah. I Anyways, like, Mr. Luck and Bill is has a new girlfriend already. Yeah, and then I hated this part too. Stacy goes up to him and like briefly tells him off and then has a huge mm-hmm. fight with the other girl. And it's like the other girl is not, neither one of them has ill should have ill will towards each other. They're both being played by this asshole, but they're fighting each other. And it just it drove me crazy. I hate when that happens. I hate yep. when that happens in movies and in real life. I hate it. The guy is the one Mostly at fault. Sh- Stop beating on be each more, other. Yeah. They should be more mad at the at the two timer. Yeah. It's like also high school two timer. Jesus, dude. That's what Ugh. That just messed up. That's yeah, terrible. Anyways, let's just uh, honestly though, that's uh, a lot of things. Anyways, yeah. so anyways, the guy's so, a jerk. So there's a cat fight. And, oh yeah, and also it's, it's a cat fight. <laughs> and, <laughs> also it's a cat fight. So they're grabbing at each other's hair. Yeah, but like, also I don't know. I've seen I've seen people fighting. It's like, dude, just just throw a punch. Anyways. But also there's like yeah. Evan Peters at the side of the room going, oh cat fight. <laughs> but I hate. I mean, I think we've already established <laughs> that like he is on several kinds of drugs it's, not just for his coma so uh, it's so bad <sighs> um so <laughs> yeah i loved it um and then <laughs> oh yeah and then the dance competition part of the dance starts which is different from the dance king and queen being crowned there's just a bet a prize for best dancers apparently yeah, and then like and um, um todd and his new girl so, like, all the characters are like anyways we're uh, Todd and his new GF are like, we're going to win the dance contest. And then Stacy's like, no, I'm going to. She grabs Evan Peters. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Evan Peters is like, trust me, I can dance. Oh, my God. And then the song plays. I got to be honest. It's like the soundtrack in general is so nostalgic for me. But I feel like any song that feels like early to mid 2000s, like pop, like kind pop of rock. punkish rock. Yeah. Oh punk, yeah, early like, like early pop punk. Yes, very more on the side of pop. Honestly, yeah. that's the best way to describe it. That is very nostalgic to me. Yeah, and that's or that's like, what this just, yeah. dance number is. Just songs that feel like they belong in any like early two thousands movies. Like the cheaper by the dozen soundtrack, like lives in my heart. Honestly, the dance competition starts and like. Also, the Todd guy, he's not a good dancer. Yeah, so. he's, just, he's just doing these weird, like, shaking the dice and, like, white man shuffle kind of moves. And it's just it's not good. Like, I gotta be honest, none of the characters are particularly good dancers. Like, they look like they're having a great time. Yeah. But if this is a dance competition, I'm expecting to see some people running out with, like, some grease, like, school yeah, dance yeah, moves. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm just saying, if it's, like, a dance competition, like, okay, that's fine. But they... But honestly, you know, the four main characters, they look like they're all having fun, so good for them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but it ends up I don't, going... I feel like they're trying... Yeah, tr- I feel like they're trying to treat it like that moment in Hairspray where like st- uh, Tracy dances at the sock hop and everyone's like, "Whoa, oh my god, she can dance!" Because honestly, she can. Like, good for you, girl. Yeah. But like, no, like these are just like. There's no choreography. The director was clearly just like, okay, guys, just have fun. And that's what they're doing. Yeah. And that was fine. But somehow Evan Peters and Sarah Paxton win. And they don't even go to the school. Yeah. Yeah. When they won, we were like, she doesn't even go here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So they won. Oh, and should they... cover Mean Girls 2 one day. Oh, my God. I've never seen Mean if Girls 2. Oh, although, I'm going to be honest, considering how many um, near heart attacks you have for this movie, I don't think you'll survive Mean Girls 2. Wonderful. What a way to go. Um, so they, so yeah, so they win the dance competition and Evan Peters is like, oh, sick. They took a, they took a photo of us together. Do you want to see the photo of my coma? And then this seemed like a really out of character moment for me, but yeah, Sarah Paxton was like, yeah, I'd love to see it. And he shows her the picture of him in a coma and then, and it's just in his wallet. He's just got it in the ID, in the ID window of his wallet Mm -hmm. And then he switches it out with the picture of them winning the contest because he thinks it's even better than his coma picture. I mean, that does sound like something a 14-year-old boy would do. You know what? You know what? Like, I had, True. I, yeah. 
I'm just saying I had friends in middle school who were skaters and they were like, hey, you want to see a photo of the scrape I got on my arm? I'm like, no. And they would show me on their <laughs> phones or iPods and I'd be like, I said no. That's, that's so accurate. Um. Just saying. <laughs> Uh, that's the moment where I'm like, okay, he convincingly is acting like a 14-year-old boy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like, hey, I have this photo of me having an injury. Want to see? <laughs> like, hey, I got this cool bruise on my arm. Want to see? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so they win the dance competition. Um, and then the dance king and queen. Because they don't say prom king or prom queen. Yeah, they just say anything. king and queen, right? I guess. And then, obviously, Steve wins. Oh, wait, no, no, no. For, before that, um, Yancey finds out that... Um, Julie only invited her as a replacement for Stacy. Do you not remember? I that? don't remember that. Wait, what? I think we were talking at the time, but basically, Farah lets it slip that um, Julie only invited Yancey to the sleepover because Stacy like went to Liz's. So Stacy feels so. It was like a pity invite. You called. I it, did call. Actually, it. Well, yeah, because we right at the beginning of the movie, like they made it like. Brie Larson made some terrible fat joke about Yancey and then Alexa Panavig immediately turned to her and like handed her that weird ransom note invite and was like, do you want to come to my <laughs> sleepover? Anyways, yeah, it, it makes Yancey feel rightfully really sad. Yeah. Honestly, even though they look like they're having a good night. But then um, another song plays and it's like, this guy's like, the song is, is dedicated to Yancey from the guy who moves the speakers. Yeah. And then it was Ben name. Shapiro. Yeah, she met is. outside of the club. Also, I'm just starting to realize did that club employ like a young high schooler to move their speakers? I don't know. I, I don't know the tech of a side of club things. with alcohol. Yeah, that but seems I'm like, a little... I, uh, oh god, that Anyways. seems a little sketchy. <laughs> so um yeah um she meets Peter the nice guy the only nice the nicest guy of this movie on the dance floor and then she's like do you like brownies? He's like of course brownies are a very important food group. <laughs> I love that. So yeah, that's good. And then um, Dance King and Queen, which is not to be confused with Prom King or Homecoming King and Queen. Yeah, It's just King and Queen of the Summer Formal. Yeah, That's what it kind of looks like because, you know, they'll say formal, but it's really like you just dress kind of nicer than you usually do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Steve obviously wins and there's this other girl who... I, I, I don't know who she is. Yeah, they don't really establish who she is. It's just like the, the antagonists know her, and so when, as soon as she wins, they're like, oh, she's totally going to give us that crown. Yeah, um, with Brie Larson and her sass. And yeah. Because she's good in this role. It's definitely like she, Brie Larson's one of those actresses. Like clear, She started when she was young, but mm-hmm. clearly early in her career, she was typecast as like the bitchy girl, which yeah. honestly, as a teenager, how much like control do you really have over what your, your typecast does? Yeah, but and she plays she it well, so... Yeah, she was a six chick and 13 going on 30, and you know what? I, I don't think she has any lines of that, but I just always <laughs> thought it was surreal. I'm like, that's Brie Larson! Yeah, I remember when I realized that, too, and I was like, oh, and the fact that they didn't give her any lines, just, yeah, that also cracked me up. <laughs> um, but it's like, it's also really adorable, because, like, baby Brie Larson in, like, 80s get-up, it is kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. really, really it's cute. It's cute. Um... <laughs> So, yeah, so they're at the dance. They've been crowned. Those two have been crowned dance king and, and queen. And Steve's like, 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 they're allowed to pick their partners. Yeah. But it's also like the teacher's like, okay, pick in front of everyone else instead of, okay, the song will start in a few minutes, so get ready to dance or something. Yeah. But instead, and, like, and like, the girl just kind of goes into the crowd to pick somebody, I guess. He stays at the mic stand and is like, Julie Corky, or what, is that her name? Corky. Corky. I mean, sometimes you can't pick your last name, so. <laughs> like, not everyone has a cool name like Robin Caldwell, okay? Thank you, Alessandra Mentari. Um, so, yeah, so he picks her, and she, like, freezes. She's like, is this real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide. No escape from reality. And her friends and are like, Hannah's like, open your eyes, out the look up to the <laughs> skies, and see. And so she goes this out to dance Bohemian with This Bohemian Rhapsody I want to see. Yes. And so they go out, and they start dancing together. It's and a slow dance, and he gives her the crown. Oh, yeah, because he, he found um, the list yeah. that fell out of SpongeBob's pocket. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Steve, get a um, control tech detail, decal. Steve Phillips boxer shorts. That's where my boxers went. Yeah, he's not like, oh, that was, she was in my home, and I wasn't aware, and um, means that she I'm might. I'm going to ask my parents if we could move. Yeah, that was, he was not insanely people creeped out by that. People concerned enough for people breaking into their houses. Okay? Yeah, I feel like people, like, there's a lot of creepy behavior happening in this, and people aren't treating it with the gravity that it deserves, but I guess it's a comedy, so. 
And so, yeah, that happens, and everyone's like, yeah, we won. Or the girls on Julie's sleepover are like, yeah, we won. Everyone in Liz's sleepover is like, um, oh, well, we lost. And I think Brie Larson says something like, you gave away our spot. Because apparently the lunch spot is that important. Oh, yeah. That was so dense. <laughs> like, uh, Robin any cannot of handle works. the... Robin cannot handle the internal logic of this. It's such a dumb premise. Like nobody, like there's no assigned seating and lunch at high school. That's not how it works. Like people do kind of establish their own spots over time, but it's not like (laughs) it's ebbing and flowing and ever changing. And it doesn't, it also just doesn't matter. I'm saying sometimes people, they just eat lunch in the middle of fields, like near Mm -hmm. schools or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. Yeah. Picnic. You're a loser. Just means like, we're just eating our lunch. It's just lunch. Yep. You eat it, you go back to class, and you cry more. Yep. <laughs> but, yeah, so anyways, afterwards, Steve and Julie go out near the fountain spot, because that's so important. Mm-hmm. They almost kiss, and then the fo- a phone call happens. And her friends are like, we got to get back father. right now immediately. And she's like, Which dang. She's like, I'm sorry, I have to go. And she's acting like her entire life gets ruined. It's like, yeah, I'm, on the way back. Y'all she's live like, in the same neighborhood. And on the way back, too, she's like, ne- tomorrow morning, he's just going to realize that I'm some dumb freshman. <laughs> And it's like, no. Just say, like, I'll call you or something. I, I don't yeah. want this movie. Her self-esteem is in the toilet. That makes me so yeah. sad. Um, Anyways, while they're driving, she drops her crowd. And mm-hmm. Steve Carell comes by on a bike. His poor car got totaled or something. Yeah. He f- trips on the crown, falls on the ground. And I then also he, like, because like, this me. crown is made of, like, holographic plastic or cardboard or something. I like I think they're trying to make you think that it's metal because like there's a there's like an ADR clang that is played when it drops and stuff like that <laughs> and like it trips Steve Carell's bike but I think in actuality it's just a plastic crown. It looks plastic to me. Mm. Okay. Anyway, Steve Carell, he's once he's on the ground, he like tries to get someone to like give him his vehicle cuz he obviously thinks he's a Yeah, real he cop. tries to come into the vehicle. He does a two-week course. And then he calls his mom's like, hi, mom, can you pick me up? I'm on the street. No, I really don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Please, it's so straight. Oh, that was so funny. the funniest part of this movie. Yeah, once again, like, Steve Carell, like, we say so bad it's good. Steve Carell's just good in this. He's just good. (laughs) That's the thing with some of these movies. Like, sometimes the actors, they're, like, playing everything super, super straight. And it's hilarious. Well, it's not even moments. He's he's not even playing everything super straight. Like, he is doing, like the kid comedy buffoon thing of like, Oh, that is so uncool. And you know what I mean? Like he's got those kind of lines, but he's, I don't know. He's just selling it. He's I selling know. it. I was just, I'm trying to compare him. Like there are probably performances in the prince's diaries where it's like, what they're saying is stupid, but the actors are committing. Oh yeah. Uh, the, uh, Viscount guy, he's a prime example <laughs> of that. He's rocking it. <laughs> oh Yeah. Princess Diaries too. Okay, here, the thing is also that movie was too good for our podcast. Yeah, it so was. It was. No, because unfortunately that is the best movie to ever exist. So we started out this podcast very wrong. But That's moving okay. on, um, <laughs> Steve, th- we don't see Steve Carell anymore. So the movie is bad now. It's yeah. horrible. But they get back to the house. Oh, do you want to explain how they get into the house? Oh yeah, they go up into the tree fort. And her brother, they or actually, it's not a tree for it. It's like um, a wooden box on thin oh, yeah, it's wooden on s- stilts. Yeah, it's, it's not, not a really tree a- house. It's some kind of suspended wooden box. I'm yeah, like, it's just. I feel like that's already a hazard. Yeah, actually, maybe she stopped playing on it because it's just not fucking safe. It's not structurally sound anymore. Um, yeah, so they they climb up on top of that and they throw a rope to her brother who's in her room or in his room or and then whatever. Alexa Vega is gonna go all spy kids and she's gonna <laughs> yeah. shimmy across the rope. I'm like, but as that's happening, someone's gonna die. As that's happening, the stilt the stilts at the bottom of the fort give out and the entire thing like shifts and falls right onto the roof of the house like right it's outside like the window against the roof like it's yeah. not on the ground it's, it's hard to explain honestly just like pirate this movie online and watch <laughs> it but anyways or Alexa Vega's it. on the ground Alexa Vega's on the ground and um her friends are now able to go into her room but also while she's going down to the ground she's like guys help I'm like 
How Air can they help in a the... rickety box? Yeah. I'm she's just being, saying. She's being slowly lowered to the ground, and her friends are like, we're going to die. <laughs> in a rickety box. That's yeah. not structurally sound. So, anyway, so her friends are inside and safe, but, but her mom is getting home, so she's yeah, got to oh. sneak in simultaneously with her mom's arrival and that happens because her mom also doesn't have peripheral vision yeah it keeps up that theme of the movies and also like i said regarding the fourth thing uh, this movie from the perspective of the neighbors would be so buck wild yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) it's like nine or like ten o'clock or something yeah and like you just hear like the sounds of a bunch of girls screaming outside like in the middle of the night and then crashing you're like ooh. Yeah, how did the yeah, how did her mom not hear the screaming and crashing? And then <laughs> so she gets home and she sneaks in like the spy kid she is. Mm-hmm. And then when the mom comes up, she, she's like they're goes all... to her room. She's like, "Okay, guys, go on the floor and sleep." Yeah, they, they all, all sleep just on the floor sleep. and Robin was just astounded that no one was sleeping on the bed. Yeah. I like I've been to sleepovers like you don't usually, I don't know. Maybe you would if it was just a few of you and you wanted to keep everything equal. Oh, yeah. But well, sometimes you're like, oh, I can sleep on the floor. Or, like, some people sleep on the bed. The bed is never not occupied. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Some people sleep on the couch. Some people sleep on, like, a futon. <laughs> some people sleep on the floor. Like, it's it all depends on yeah, so anyways, who calls yeah, dibs, totally. right? Like, it's, yeah. yeah. But anyways, all the girls sleep on the floor after hiding their weed stash. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom and dad come. <laughs> and they're like, oh, they're asleep on the floor. And they don't think it's suspicious that no one's on the bed. Because, again, sleepovers. Like, mm. hmm but anyways when they're gone like julie's like i had my cinderella moment and i'm still the ugly stepsister oh my god girl you are 14 like i will say just something i will say i because i've been watching a lot of sailor moon the characters are 14 (laughs) there are moments in the move in the show where i'm like you guys are 14 you don't need to worry about finding a boyfriend who will love you forever you guys are 14 and the same applies to this but anyway, she goes to sleep in the morning. Everyone has pancakes. And this yeah. is the moment where, like, Jane Lynch is like, so anyways, I knew that you did something last night. And and she's not mad enough. Like, my child went into a club with alcohol and other yeah. things we don't want to mention. Did you not know, like, did you not know of, like, all the drug talks you get at school and stuff? She would have been old enough to have, like, presentations. Like, anyways, guys, here, watch an episode of Intervention. <laughs> Yeah, but she's just treating drugs. it. She, but she's just treating it like, well, they went out and had a fun night on the town, and it's okay. And uh, yeah, I and mean, there's they did the, some illegal things. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be a really incredible story to like tell your kids one day, or to like tell yeah. your significant other. It's like, yeah, when we were young, we made monogram thongs with our names. Oh my on god, them. that's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then. Oh, yeah, and, and that thing I was referencing earlier where Jane Lynch is like, I remember when you were a kid and you used to, used to, what, like, so... Do ballet and yeah. play with the ladybugs. It's like, a, it's one of those moments about, like, growing up and stuff. I feel like yeah. it's supposed to be sweet. But, but I was but... waiting for her to be like, and I remember you like to go to the skate park or, like, any allusion to things that she does now, like, ho- you know, like, like, hot dogs and skating and, you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. You know, like this is clearly one of those like self-insert movies where you're like, oh, you're supposed to project onto the main character, but honestly, yeah, I'm, a little bit. I'm, I feel like I'm projecting more onto like, like um, Farah because of like that cool ass blazer. Come on, <laughs> yeah, like, she's the best dress of them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, oh yeah, and then her friend uh, moves away that very day, apparently. Oh yeah, with the whole moving away. Yeah, thing. they have this tearful goodbye, and it's like, so is she not moving like at the end of the month? Like she's moving like today? Like on she gets the dot. In, yeah, she gets in the car like, with her parents, and then like it's like she's just gone forever. Like like I how guess? this because like Alexa Vega is crying at their goodbye scene. Yeah, they're and, playing like, it like this is the last time they'll ever now? see each also, other. Also, are you not seeing her off at the airport? Because that's another thing that BFF do yeah I'm just, I'm just saying like my sister had to say goodbye to her bff like they're still kind of friends now but like she had to say goodbye and she i just remember the day we all went to the airport to say goodbye to her friend and the family and like it's like it was an airport goodbye mm-hmm. and like shit you see in movies and it was so sad but it's like yeah that's what you but, do you don't say goodbye in a driveway unless you do well, like <laughs> unless like Unless it's like, oh, you have packed all your stuff and now you're really going. Mm-hmm. But like, I guess it would ruin the movie if Hannah's like, actually, I'm still going to be here for another few days. Yeah, yeah, I'm still yeah. packing up the house. 
Yeah. But it's, that would it's be more... so. <laughs> that would be so. That would ruin the mood of the movie when it's like she call Hannah calls a few days later, like you know I'm actually still gonna be here for a few days. Do you want to help us pack and stuff? Do you want to have another and sleepover? Ju- <laughs> and Julie's like, I spent all this time crying over you, and you told now you have a few days left. Yeah. <gasps> of course, I want to pack with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, realistic best friends getting mad at yeah. me like of course I love you oh yeah oh yeah and then she I was about to say and that's the end of the movie but it isn't because she goes back into her room and what's this something is sparkling outside of her window like, oh <gasps> yeah on the tree fort thingy or no on the fort stilt fort that's now against it's her like room lodged against act- her bedroom window against the house like again like realistic ending to this movie is like that thing falls and then they all die of tetanus Oh my god! So so she sees that the crown is there, and she's like, "What you? How'd you get there?" And she goes she to get goes the up crown. To grab it, and Steve is there, and they kiss. How did he get there? Let's clearly again. This is the neighborhood where you could just get into people's houses. Yeah, and, it's and not also weird. like he he didn't wait there holding the crown or anything like he, it wasn't like a moment where he was just kind of like here i am like he waited for her to grab the crown and then was like surprise <laughs> like it's just I mean, it's, like it's cute but it also like it's cute but it's also like i think if i think it'd also be cuter if they if he like came up to the door like with the crown or something yeah or like maybe he goes to the door knocks leaves the crown there's like did he bring the crown and then he shows himself I but guess. it didn't have to have the whole thing of the fort. But yeah, but the I idea I like, came. but I like the idea of him like hanging the crown on that little nail or whatever, and then hiding behind and like giggling to himself because he's, <laughs> he's just hiding now. Like it's, uh, it's so weird. It's so weird. What if like he was there all day? And she's like, I gotta pee. Is she gonna fucking come here or not? <laughs> but anyways, they meet, they kiss, and the fort doesn't crumble, and no one dies of tetanus. Yeah. <laughs> And, oh, and the final, final scene of the movie is um, Liz and Stacy, like, with their girl posse eating at the dumpster oh, lunch yeah. tables. Oh, my God. It's not that bad. Are you sure there's no, like, they bring a nice field little... or bleachers that you go in? Yeah, they bring themselves. Again, in they high bring... school, people just, people just sit in the <laughs> corners of the hallways to eat. Exactly. But they also, they make it nice for themselves. They bring a nice little checkered tablecloth, and they, like, throw it out yep. over the table, and they sit down. Yeah, they're having, like, a nice little... A nice little lunch moment, and then somebody comes and throws something in the dumpster because it's a dumpster, and she yeah, screams. Yeah, and it's probably a custodian. She yes, screams Stacey bloody screamed. murder because how dare someone throw garbage in a dumpster? She's, she's screaming <laughs> like it's a horror movie. Like yeah, she's she screaming like they dumped the garbage on her. Like, they didn't. She just... <laughs> It's garbage. I mean, maybe this is like a bougie neighborhood where people don't care about custodians. Or... Mm, mm, mm-hmm. Maybe. <sighs> Which seems like it. I'm, I'm getting these vibes. This is a bougie neighborhood. It's a strange neighborhood yeah. with an old navy nearby where you can just climb into people's houses. Also, it's a neighborhood where people can just leave their shit in their jeeps and not think that people are going to go through it. Yeah, that's how they get. That's how the other team gets his boxers. Is they just go through yeah, his gym Steve's bag. Boxers. But and but Alexa Panavega has to break into his house and smell his shoes first. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I hated this that. This is a very strange. Oh, and there's also the only reason that like, I actually remembered it is because they do this little like photo montage at the end of the movie because one of them has like one of those Polaroid sticker cameras, mm. and so the end of the movie that like while the credits are playing they're showing these little like Polaroid photos from the night. Yeah, like screenshots from the movie, but set up to look like Polaroids. And one of the screenshots that the editor chose <laughs> was her sniffing the shoe. Why? <laughs> I hated it. Like I would have, I could have just lived a pleasant life where I forgot that even happened. But because the editor was like, "Hey, remember this disgusting moment?" Uh, I hated it. I hate it. <laughs> oh, so final thoughts on the movie. Uh, final thoughts. Um, this it it. it, it, it this movie has a lot of weird stereotyping about like quote unquote nerds and like fat people and popular girls mm. and high school and it's it just it feels like it takes place in an alternate universe where the stakes of life yeah. are different. Um, like, but I guess a Yancey lot of teen story- movies do. Mm-hmm. Yancey storyline, like I- I'm a chubbier girl and just me too. Seeing it as a kid, it really it didn't really sit well with me. Like I guess I thought it was cute, but I w- it never really felt 
normal. It's like, you'll just date guys who like brownies, which I guess was code for you'll just date guys who are fat like you. Yeah. Basically, it's not saying anything that will give people more empathy towards anyone who's remotely plus sized. Yeah. Which is what they should do, honestly. Like, like honestly, this movie would be absolutely subversive if, like, Yancey dated a guy who, like, looked like Julie's love interest. Yeah, that could have been interesting. We could have done a real, like, Tracy Turnblad, uh, yeah. like, Saying, Link Larkin moment. Hairspray, real fucking progressive, because like, that's a, the only movie that pairs, like, heartthrob Zac Efron with a bigger woman. Mm-hmm. And Zac Efron, like, I've looked at all of his love interests for all the movies he's been uh-huh. in, because he's, like, a leading man, and, like, they've never paired him with a plus-size woman except for Hairspray. Yeah, and that's only because, like, Nikki Blonsky is fucking fierce. <laughs> She is she's, beautiful, I, and she can fucking dance. She's such a... I honestly am so pissed that Nikki Blonsky has kind of fallen off the radar of the mainstream, because I think she's well, so talented. Cause, well, it's because um, Hollywood doesn't like fat people. Yep. Like, even Rebel Wilson, like... Yep. Honestly, the movie Isn't It Romantic, she is great. Oh my that. god, totally. And it's beautiful, where she only, she's a character who just learns to love herself, but also, that's a movie that had to be written specifically for her. She had to be the producer and stuff. And obviously, Adam Devine is her love interest. They have beautiful chemistry together. Oh, yeah, so like, totally. Like, I, I don't complain, but it's also... Clearly, that choice was intentional. Yeah. So... But, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, Hollywood's got a long ways to go still in terms of yeah, representation for certain bits of groups. Subtle fatphobia are still there. Like, yeah. Even now, like, I feel like... I was talking about this with a friend of mine. She said she thinks Melissa McCarthy is super, super talented, mm-hmm. but she hates the fact that Melissa keeps getting... She tends to get, a, like, roles where she has to be very disgusting. That's, and yeah. And that's the very, like, coded fat phobia Side there. note, like, I would yeah. love if we did an episode about Thunder Force because it's very low rated, but I really enjoyed Thunder Force. And Melissa McCarthy plays, like, a desirable, sexy, strong character in it. And that, like, as a fellow chubby redhead, because her character's got red hair in that movie, I really appreciated that. All right. Yeah. We will cover Thunder Force one day. Yeah. But, yeah, anyways, like, Melissa McCarthy, like, even the movie Spy, where I think her character is great, they put in all these cat jokes, which yeah. sometimes they don't hit, and sometimes they do. It's yeah. Like, it's, it's, I mean, in Spy, there's kind of, okay, we're talking about a completely different movie now. But, but, but like, honestly, it's almost like the movie was like, so here's a movie that's very empowering towards this plus-size character, and it's not mentioned that she's plus-sized a lot, and then some producer was like, no, put in cat jokes. Yeah, but I think, to me, that represents, a, like, the dichotomy if that's the right word, of, like, how people see her versus how she sees herself. Mm. Because I think that's part of the conflict of that movie is, like, she's being... All her undercover missions are, like, this cat lady who's on vacation and never married, and you know what I mean? Like, she's got all this stuff. Anyway, Spy's a great movie. Uh, We don't talk about good movies here, though. So, though, like, we're (laughs) we're talking about portrayals of, like, uh, bigger women specifically in movies and stuff, and Mm -hmm. how, like... Well, pe- there's a reason why people always flock to Hairspray for plus size rep, because that's the only one. But it's also like, is, does Hollywood just not want Zac Efron to kiss another bigger woman? Are they intimidated? I don't oh, know. Well. I don't know. It's a thing with like leading men, how only certain women could be placed like near certain leading men. Yeah. Something that actually pisses me off, because honestly, I fully believe cast on chemistry and you never go wrong. Okay. Oh my God. Amen. Um, cast on chemistry. If- I think that's why I hated the movie Holiday because like the characters do not have good chemistry. Oh. It's an Emma Roberts and Luke something Australian dude, but okay. it's not a Hemsworth. But <laughs> I thought that I th- he's the an characters Australian, are so, but he's not a Hemsworth. So horrible. Well, the their chemistry is so horrible. I'm like, and also the jokes just suck. But I was like, I feel like if they picked like comic actors who do way more comedy, who have good chemistry, <coughs> Rebel Wilson and Adam Devine. <coughs> <laughs> then I would not hate that movie that much. Mm-hmm. But instead, it's a movie that focuses too much on, like, the horniness of the viewer. But it's, like, it's not even good, sexy stuff. It's, like, I'm repulsed. I'm attracted mm. to men and women, and I am repulsed. Oh. And, I haven't oh, seen Holiday. God. I don't know that much about it, but that doesn't sound I don't, fun. I wouldn't I recommend you watch it. Alex Moffat is in it, and I think oh. that's the only upside. Like, Alex Moffat, he doesn't do anything in a comedy movie. Oh. Isn't that a shame when you see somebody who you know is talented and they're just not put to good use? Um, Ray Larson in this That's movie. what I was about to say! Because <laughs> at least okay. Steve Carell got to do something and Ray yeah. Larson's like, 
again, at that point in her career, she was probably just like, oh, you look like a mean girl. Be the mean girl. Yeah. And uh, now so she's like, now everyone, now all the woola woo I know just love her. Yeah. And yes, I say a woola woo. Robin makes fun of me for that. <laughs> so, woman uh, loving woman. <laughs> woola yeah. woo. Final thoughts on the movie. Um, the plus size storyline rubbed me the wrong way as a child and it rubs me r- the wrong way now. All and right. also, but all in all, the movie's very train wreckish y, but it's fun to watch with another person. Train wreckish as in like the Amy Schumer movie that also has Brie Larson in it, or is it. In... She's in that movie? In train. Have you not seen train? I really love train wreck. Well, I know Bill Hader's in that, so I'm like... Bill okay, Hader's really good in it. Name. Brie Larson plays her sister. She's really good in it. Colin Quinn, uh, I think that's his name. He's Isn't really John good. Is John Cena in that? John Cena's fantastic in Trainwreck. It's, <laughs> yeah. I feel like okay, that movie so didn't... I, would... I feel like it didn't do well because people hate Amy Schumer. Uh, we can get into it another time. Um, we'll, we'll save that for our um, smart movie podcast, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, Brie Larson, who has a more surprising resume than I thought... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, she's she's great in Trainwreck. Oh, and Mike Birbigli is in it. They play. She, he's her partner. Anyway, um, anyways, it's, it's a it's a fun one. Moving on. So, final thoughts on this movie? Very star studded. Again, mm-hmm, Evan Peters, mm-hmm. Steve Carell, Jane Lynch, Brie freaking Larson, Summer Glau. Yeah. Even like um the redhead Scout Taylor Compton. She was in like the remake of the Halloween movie. Oh. The two, t- 2007 one and. I just remember because I was looking at the Wikipedia article of Scream Queens and she was listed there. Oh. Like, whoa, good for her. I don't think she's done much now, but I guess to be called a Scream Queen, I'm like, damn, good for you, girl. Yeah. That rocks. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, those are my thoughts. And also, again, I watched this movie so much as a kid. And also, shout out to my good friend, Jamie Mack, who um, wa- said that she watched this movie a lot as a child as well. <laughs> she had it on VHS. Oh my god. Yep. Wow. And I just remember I met I uh, ran into Jamie at a dinner. The first dinner I had in over a year, so it was insane, but I'm like, <laughs> "Hey, me and my friend are going to watch Sleepover for our bad movie pocket." She's like, "Hell yeah, I'm into that." And I just <laughs> asked her like, "You always think the plus size storyline was weird cuz honestly, I know that she's seen it a few times." Mm-hmm, she's mm-hmm. like, "I can't really remember her answer, but I it's almost like I feel like she just Push that detail out of her head when watching this movie. Mm. Yeah, but it's anyways, no yeah. But um, clearly, it's something that I was thinking about. Yeah, because it's me. Um, so those are my thoughts on the movie. Nostalgic because the score fucking slaps. The sc- yeah, the soundtrack and the set design were impeccable. <laughs> and the side plot where the dad tries to fix their water. <laughs> Yeah, Very I love that that was his arc. It's just Jeff Garland fixes uh, fixes a sink. Yeah. That's his whole arc. While his arc. wife has fun and the yeah, plot. I mean, yeah. he's supportive, so good for him. Yeah. Also the, I loved okay, that. one quick note. Huh? I loved their relationship. Side note, Jane Lynch and Jeff Garland, I loved their relationship. I thought oh, they were yeah. so cute. Oh, yeah, again, he was just supportive of her going to the club. And yeah. Like, you deserve a night out. I'm like, that's good. And Julie sees that and, like, uh, I'm just saying, uh, an hour ago, Julie was like, my mom doesn't go to the club. Does dad know? Like, he probably does. Yeah. He probably approves and is like, yeah, have fun at the club, babe. Not my scene, but go have fun. Absolutely. Stay safe. We find out that that is the driver. case. Well, clearly a good marriage that she should aspire to. Mm-hmm. Or like a good, like, loving relationship where they know what the other likes and stuff. Absolutely. But anyways, this but. movie, again, the movie that almost gave Robin three separate annuals. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's, uh... It's a good one. Uh, should we should we wrap it up? We should wrap it up because all right. Oh um, God. Okay, Robin, you good? Your heart is at a normal rate. <laughs> um, okay. yep. Uh, so yeah, you can follow the podcast at Untitled BM Pod. Follow follow us along with Mark Cope, creator of Yep Most Popular Yep Girls Yep. In School. Get our followers up to at least yep. five. <laughs> yeah, and you can follow me, Alessandria Mentari, at at Sandrification. Uh, and you can follow me, Robin, at Ribbon Cartwheel on uh, Twitter and Instagram. And special thanks to Ario Nazarade for our theme song, which he uh, composed and performed. Um, it is it is all star by Smash Mouth, but jazzy, and I love it. I love it too. I, I feel like I should ask him for the sheet music because I love that baseline of it. Yeah. Anyways, oh, totally. Yeah, to I'm Ario. sure he could provide some sheet music. Yeah. Thank you to Aryo and thank you to all of our three followers. Yeah. This has been the Untitled Bad Movie Podcast. (laughs) And we're off air. (laughs) 